Everyone knows Texas is a big state. Which means we got a lot of games here, and it's our job to find them. Hey, I'm Billy. And I'm Jay. We've known each other since the 90s. We've been gamers all our lives. And now, we're collectors. Join us on our epic quest to rescue retro games from the dustbins of obscurity. And give them a proper home. In our game rooms. I've been gaming since back in the days of the Atari 2600. Um, I was maybe five years old. Um, we didn't actually have an Atari, but one of my mom's friends, they did. And I remember going over there and playing, you know, the uh, Empire Strikes Back and things like that on the Atari 2600. I've been gaming since, um, man, I was like four years old. My grandparents' house, they had an intellivision. And uh, my uncle and my dad would always fight over intelligent boxing and I'd always want in and they wouldn't let me in. I've been collecting hardcore for probably five years or so now and I got into it because I just wanted to play uh, some of those older games that we had as kids. Eventually I looked and I had a lot of Nintendo games and started collecting other systems too. I've been a hardcore collector for probably the last eight years I guess. I sold all my games and I got older and so I wanted them all back and so I started collecting them all basically and that's where I am now. Hey Mike, this is Jay. Uh, just calling to see if we're still on for two. We're doing our usual video game hunting on, on Saturday and we met this guy on Craigslist. Uh, his name is Mike and who I have actually now dubbed Video Game Mike. And we're going to go meet him and we had some time to kill so we went to this place called Entertain Mart which we frequent often because we can get some pretty good deals on some games there. Hey, you know what that angle looks like right now? It looks like those Sonic commercials. <laughs> <laughs> The thing about Entertainment Mart is, I don't go in expecting to find anything, but I mean, if you want Nintendo games, they, they usually don't check on you know, their prices. You can get a Nintendo game for $4 or less. Um, Super Nintendo games, I think, are $5 or less. Nintendo 64, $7 or less. I mean, I've seen, you know, like Donkey Kong for seven bucks and Mario Party for $7, Mario Kart for $7. Hey look, stadium events. class track <laughs> It's not worth the time to train an employee to pick out what's valuable and what's not. Um, this is such an incredibly small percentage of our business that it's basically not worth it. Best deal I ever found there actually was a Super Nintendo version of Boogerman. Uh, usually retails around $30, $35 and uh, I was able to get it for $5.99. So, Ever since then, I'm always checking and seeing what they got because you never know what you're going to find there. You know, I actually got a Persona, the first Persona on PS1 for $3. Here, I didn't know what he had, so. Ah, ah, ah. A lot of times, we won't even go there to look for games. A lot of times, what we'll do is we'll go there to look and see uh, what the stickers are in some of these old games. If we find a game that has a sticker on it from another video store or something like that we will call and see if they're still open and if they are and they have stuff then we go and uh, we go and rummage through their their things. Entertain Mart didn't really find anything but you know you don't always when you go there. It's usually hit or miss though um, like I said I, I never go in expecting to find anything. Now we're off to see Video Game Mike and we'll see what he's all about. First time meeting him, you know, any guy who deals with old NES games is okay by me. Well, the bottom line is, is that if this dude gives me 30 bucks for Secret of Mana, then I've already paid for half of that lot that I bought. And I've yeah. actually, if you add it together, I got the game for $5. And so that's a $25 profit. Yeah, screw you on that one. I'm still mad about that, asshole. Yeah, whatever. Hey, hey, you know what? It's like I said, we're, we're, we're in this to collect, but we're collectors. We're not in it to make a buck. Well, you know? yeah, but when you get freaking $300 worth of games for $65, I can be mad. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, it's, I keep the games that I don't have, and what I do have, duplicates, I sell the rest, and I use that money to go and buy more games and feed the habit. We're collectors first. Yeah. We're not. Yeah. But I'm still mad. We're not there to, we're not there to <laughs> screw over old ladies. <laughs> or are we? We're going to meet Mike um, at a McDonald's in Mansfield off 287. Yeah, over there. 
When I first met Jay and Billy, I thought they were a bunch of lunatics asking me to meet up with them while they bring a camera and wanted to film me. But I went with it to make a little bit of money. I couldn't even contain myself. Walked over there, shook his hand, and was like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna look at your games now. And so we just started rummaging through his stuff. And he just starts pulling out box after box after box after box. It's crazy how much stuff he had. Yeah, definitely want these two. Okay. I got into selling Nintendos and games like that because I needed another way to make some money. Hey, here's the, uh, here's the great one. Yes. I was rummaging through this stuff. I come across this black cart, and whenever I see anything that's not gray, it kind of catches my eye. And I saw he had King of Kings. It's a wisdom tree game, one of those Bible games. As soon as I saw that game, I knew that I was walking out of there with it. All these five bucks a pop, too. Well, some of them are the, um, the Donkey Kong one is 10. Okay. Uh, Contra is 20. So, what do you do? Do you just buy and sell? Is that yeah, I just buy and sell, really. I started off collecting and then. I seen what some of them were worth, so I started selling them. I figured that the older stuff, people wouldn't know what it's worth, so I buy it real cheap and sell it relatively cheap. Yeah, that one's a good one, actually. That's actually a good game. Uh, the craziest story about game dealing I had was one time I, I met up with a dude in an alley in Oak Cliff, and he was telling me that, texting me where, I, where was I at and all this, and. And uh, he drove around a couple of times, I guess, looking for me, and he called me and told me, hey man, where you at? I told him, oh, just meet me by the white car at the end of the alley. And so he pulled up there, and I walked out the alley, and he was all like, hey, I had to go home and grab my strap. I was a little worried about this. I was like, oh, I got cheerings. Don't kill me. I like this guy. I think we're definitely gonna have to do business again. Meeting Mike was, was really awesome. I gave him my number and my email, and he said he'll be in contact with me. Whenever he gets new stuff in or finds deals, he's gonna contact me, so I'm gonna keep in touch with Mike. I got two NES games. I got The Adventures of Lolo, and I got King of Kings. I found a Tetris 2, Little Nemo, Paperboy. I paid $5 a piece on those, and he actually threw in a Super Mario Brothers Duck Hunt. I threw in the Mario Brothers Duck Hunt for Jay, because I wanted him to keep coming back, and I had 13 copies. Yeah, I had to, uh, had to rebuy Paperboy, because you know who wanted the other one. Oh, your ex-wife took yeah. the Paperboy? Yeah, well, she hadn't taken it yet, but she was she She's got like, dibs on it. Yeah, like two days ago, she's like, where's my Nintendo and my games? I'm like, all right, what do you want? Oh, what were you doing, just hoping she would forget? Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> duh. Yeah, yeah, apparently his ex-wife is um, jocking his games. <laughs> I was like, what do you want? I was like, let's make this easy. She's like, Mario 1, 2, and 3, Paperboy, Dr. Mario. It sucks. Uh, Legend of Zelda and Adventure of Link. You can take a lot of things from a man, but you can't take his games. So I feel sorry for the guy, I really do. She was like, oh, um, by the way, the, the Mario 1 I want, I want the one in the box. And I just kind of ignored it and kept talking. And she's like, do you hear what I said? What can you do, man? What can you do? And I'm like, yeah, okay, I got a Mario, but I don't know if I have one with Duck Hunt or not. And she's like, you're not listening to what I'm saying. I want the one in a box. I'm like, no, I hear you, but you know, we're gonna talk about that. You're not getting the Mario in a box. That's not happening. Be lucky you're even getting one at all. If my ex-wife was taking my games, I'd be crying and I'd tell her, no, listen up, that's it. Jay ain't getting any of my games. Why would, why would Jay get any of my games? Because he's super handsome. I don't want to throw anybody into the bus, but a plane was devised basically to hide them or take them to someone else's house and call her and tell her, hey, uh, somebody broke in and and they, they stole all my, all my Nintendo games and then be like, I don't know what happened. <laughs> there was a plan advised. I wasn't a part of it. The AMC was like, you should have been like, someone broke in and that's all they took. <laughs> Someone broke in, went straight to my closet, and took my Nintendo games. Yeah, these games are... They're really good shape. They actually, they really are. They're a little dirty, you know, a little dusty, but... I just need to be clean. It's no big yeah, deal. Yeah, there's not a lot of discoloration. There is on this paper, boy, but... A little bit, a little, a little bit of, uh, like of rubbing give, alcohol. Yeah, I'll just give the X that one. And, and that, that Mario Duck Hunt. We got the games from Mike, and now we're heading off to uh, Game Exchange in uh, Waxahachie. <laughs> Waxahachie. Um, where are you guys located? It's about, I don't know, 40 minutes south um, of where we are right now, and I'm really unfamiliar with that area. It's 287 to 77 and take a left. Do you remember? Yeah. 
I said, look for a Whataburger. Well, she just told me that. Let's go. I talked to the dude on the phone and he said, I think he said that most expensive game was like $20 on their, their NES games. They got NES, NES, um, Genesis, Atari, said they got all kinds of stuff. We pulled up Google Maps, Maps before we left and the directions were not right, of course. Okay, yeah, it says it's 2.3 miles that way. So the dude told me to take a left, but we need to take a right. We have called four times trying to get directions to this place and everyone's got us going and, and left down, up and right, and it's just, it's ridiculous. Then he got off the phone and was like, no, I told them wrong. <laughs> <laughs> are gonna be quite upset with me. One guy said go right, and that they were right next door to a Whataburger, and then it was across the street from Whataburger. Dude, I don't even see a Whataburger sign. Well, it's 1.3 miles away, so. I have eyes like a hawk. No? No, you don't. <laughs> he does not have eyes like a hawk. Yeah, I'd say I do. I can, I can. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> spot your mom from a mile away. <laughs> I just want the record to show you're the one wearing glasses, not me. You're supposed to be talking about games, not my eyes. Okay, I wasn't talking about your eyes, and don't make it sound like I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm fantasizing about your stupid eyes. Do you get lost in them? Do I get lost in them? <laughs> he was talking about how he has this eagle eye vision and stuff, and then he starts commenting on how blue my eyes are. I mean, I'm like, dude. Come on, I know it's been a 40 minute, 40 minute car ride, and I know you're itching for some game, but you know, back off a little bit, you know? There it is, it's right there, see it? We finally found Game Exchange, we pulled up, and I was just, I was just relieved. I didn't think we'd ever find it, just because all the bad directions that we got from so many different people. We finally pull into the parking lot, and I'm ready to get out of this car, because 40 minute car ride with Jay gets kind of stinky. I walk into the door and it's like games everywhere. You go into the counter, you look to the right, you got glass cases and it's just old school. And you look to the left and it's more old school. If I was gonna rob someone, don't put this in. <laughs> but I'd go there, back a freaking truck in and just start loading up. We walked in and I was floored by how cheap some of their games were. I could not believe some of the prices that these people had. I was going over the rack for the, the SNES games and one caught my eye immediately, and that was Final Fight 3. I saw it, $15. Sure, it had some label damage. Sure, it had some stickers on it. But I'm completely confident that I can get that cart looking almost as good as new. And for $15, it's a no-brainer. He found this game, Final Fight, for $15. And I thought that was kind of high until I asked him what it actually went for. And I wanted to take the game from him and, and just go to the counter. But, you know. Friends don't do that to friends. So my brother had come with us and he found a, um, I believe a Star Wars uh, on Sega CD. And Jay's brother comes up and he, I look at his stupid little meat claw and he's got a Sega CD game, Rebel Assault for not $1.99 and I'm looking for this I've been looking for this game for a while he showed Billy and Billy said let me see and reached for it and Billy and and my brother were both yanking on the thing saying give it to me it's mine it's mine they reminded me of my kids it was ridiculous right in the middle of game exchange throwing a fit a little bit of jealousy and a little bit of rage thrown in I got a little angry I wanted to look at it I just wanted to look at it and the guy flips out. I couldn't. I could not believe it. And I, I looked at them, and and I, I swear I thought I was talking to my kids. I was like, "What are you two doing?" And and my brother says he won't give me the game back. And Billy says, "I just wanted to see it." I'm like, "Dude, you had the game. You picked it up first. You got dibs." Billy, knock it off. I guess you know, looking back on it, it was kind of embarrassing. But at the time, you know, I just wanted to see the game, and he didn't want me to see the game, and that's about what it boiled down to. He thought I was going to take it and try to pay for it. Who knows? Maybe I would have. It, it was it was ridiculous. I, my my kids are three and six, and these are grown men, older than me, mind you. I wasn't going to take the game from him. I just wanted to look at it. I wanted to read the back and look at it, and then go pay for it. <laughs> game exchange. I found a complete tech mobile. 
And I also scored um, a Super Mario Brothers 2 for $4. I bought a Quattro Sports for $5, I believe. I got Final Fight 3. I got Ultimate Stuntman, it's a gold cart. I also got fast food on the Atari 2600. I don't know much about it, but I'm a big Burger Time fan on the Intellivision, and this kind of reminded me of Burger Time. I don't, I don't know, I just like fast food games. I don't know, it's kind of weird, but I went ahead and got it. It was $1.99, so I, uh, I picked it up. We were in there so long, it, it got dark outside, but hey, it was worth it. Uh, the place is pretty awesome. This place won me over, and I will be going back there many, many times. Overall, I would say today was a success. I scored some games from Mike, made a new contact. Check this out, I walked in on my, my wife's little nephew and he was sitting in the chair playing the Wii and it, it was a fighting game, he had both controllers and he looked like he was like, like this. I was like, what the hell is he doing? But then I realized he was playing the Wii. Found a new place, really not too far from here, 30, 40 minutes away with some very good prices. So I'd say overall, good day, can't complain. Uh, on to next week and see what we can find next weekend. Brave Star, bitch! <laughs> <laughs>time to take the show on the road we're gonna go down to san antonio and meet up with a fellow youtuber we're gonna go down the i-35 corridor but first before we get to san antonio we're gonna hit up austin we're gonna pass through hit up some stores and see what we can find all right time to hit the road i get to billy's apartment go to pick him up and uh i pick up his luggage which is a backpack and it's uh pretty light um so light in fact that it feels like there's nothing in it so i'm like where are the clothes? And that's when uh, his wife interjects and says, I told you so. And I'm like, told him so what? She's like, he's got no clothes packed. So I'm like, dude, you got no clothes packed? You left my house an hour and a half ago. Why aren't you packed and ready? And he's like, I don't stink. You had dead packed no clothes for a three day trip. What the hell is wrong with you? When Jay arrived at the apartment, I was packed and I was ready to go. I had my backpack full of Retro Gamer magazine and toothbrush. So I'm like, dude, we're going on a three day trip and you got no socks, no underwear, shirt, nothing. I mean, I don't understand that. So at that point he throws a little fit, fine, and decides to go and, and pack a couple of things. I don't stink. It smelled like the car decided to fart. Been in the car for three and a half hours with Jay Pickle and bank, 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 bank. So I'm glad to get out. And uh, we're in Austin now and see a thrift store. We're gonna go check that out and see what they have. We go in there and uh, Billy notices this PlayStation 1 in, in a glass case. Ask the lady how much it is. She says $10. Not sure if it works, this and that. So if the, the lid open and opens and closes like it's supposed to, I'll take a chance on it. And while he's doing that, I go over to the CD rack. When you go to a thrift store, especially like Goodwill or something like that, you always look at the CD rack. Because a lot of times you're going to find Dreamcast games and PS1 games, games that are in jewel cases. They'll put them with the CDs because the people that work there have no clue a lot of times. So they'll just stack them with the CDs not knowing any better. So you always got to check those out. Uh, $10 for a PlayStation, that's not too bad. Um, actually, I went up to the counter to pay and uh, the chick rings, rings me up. Gave me a 50% discount. Why? I have no idea. I go to the counter to pay, put the PlayStation on the counter, chick rings me up, just kind of looks at me, starts typing in on her little computer thing, it says 540. I'm not gonna complain. She wants to give me a discount. Who am I to say no? People just when they get around them, especially women, when they get around, like drop IQ points and they get stupid. So he has this uncanny knack to just get whatever the heck he wants, whether it be a discount or a free cake at KFC. It doesn't matter. The guy's going to get it. So F him. So we're leaving the thrift store, and I pull up games on the GPS, and this place called Game Over Games comes up. 
So we're gonna go check them out. There are no game over stores in the Metroplex where we're from. So kind of anxious to see what they got going. Dude, I can't get in there. Yeah, you can't wait till this truck is by. Okay, this car. Now go, 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 go. <laughs> we pull up to this place, walking up to the front door, the, the glass on the outside, they got basically everything from like an Odyssey 2 down to like a PS3 and everything in between that came out. And so I hadn't even walked in the door yet and already I'm, I'm excited, I'm anxious. We walked in the game over and my eyes lit up. I mean, if, if you can think of it, they had it. This place is a gold mine. The fact that they even have a full case dedicated to imports they says something. A lot of the diehard fans who, you know, they don't play them anymore, they need money. Right. You know, they're like, well, here's a stack of all these import Dreamcast fighting games. Gotcha. And then I'm like, all right. Entire racks full of Atari, and television, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, TI-99, any system you can think of. One of the employees tells us that they have a museum. We might be a little uncultured, but I'm thinking, okay, what kind of what kind of museum is gonna be in your, your back room? We go back there and pretty freaking impressed. It's so cool. Systems behind glasses, cards, and little date pads that say when they were released, how many consoles were sold. This is a uh, signed power glove by the cast of The Wizard. Uh, Alamo Draft House was doing a uh, special screening of the show a couple years back. I don't know if you ever saw the documentary The King of Kong. Uh, yeah, great movie. This is signed by uh, Walter Day and Steve Wiebe. Oddly enough, Billy Mitchell wasn't there really? to uh, figure that one to sign. <laughs> really, if you were Billy Mitchell, would you be there to sign it? Game Over has a main machine. You see a cabinet, gotta play, of course. We decided we were gonna take on the Donkey Kong Challenge, see if we could beat Steve Weeby at his own game. And let me tell you something, we came so close to beating that record, it's not even funny. Really? You definitely need your energy when searching for games. So at Game Over Games, I had to buy a Mario energy drink. Other than that, I was just window shopping. A place like Game Over is really awesome to see, but you gotta keep in mind going into a place like this that it is a retail store. You gotta expect retail prices. We didn't come out there with much, but it's still a fun place to go and look, hang out for a while. It's a store full of games, so it's just fun being there. But looky what I got. But open it up, try it, see what it tastes like. I've always wanted to get one of these. How is it? It's basically Red Bull with a Mario on the cover. Oh, really? Yeah, but it's good. I like Red Bull. That's cool. After we left Game Over, we hit a few more places and it was basically the same story everywhere we went. Retail, retail, retail. It was awesome seeing all these different stores and the games that they had. We just couldn't buy anything. Found this place in the mall. These guys' prices were so ridiculous, we walked in and walked right back out. You know, it looks like we're probably gonna leave Austin empty-handed. Looking at Austin in our rearview mirror, heading down to New Braunfels. There's a place called the D-Pad, we wanna hit that up. It's another retail store, but hey, you never know. Boy, what kind of bullshit is this? It's, it's called New Brunsfold. Did, what the f Why the hell would anybody choose to live here? It's a small, quiet, quaint town. Did the road, this roads are worse than freaking Louisiana. We obviously don't give a damn about their roads and doing construction and making sure people aren't driving like this. They're going down the freaking road. You've got to be freaking kidding me, dude. Lost satellite reception. Of course you did. We're in the middle of effing nowhere. You think something orbiting the Earth would be able to keep track of you, but not when you enter New Brunsville. Nope. <laughs> Felt like I was, I was driving to my demise. We come to this intersection. We see Slash rocking out on one corner. See D-pad on the other. And it was game on.
and I saw that logo of the D-pad on the side of the building, I knew I was gonna love this place. Walk into D-pad, um, not your typical store. It looked like, like maybe you were walking into a cage fight or something. It was kind of chain link fence all over the place. Looked up on the wall and I mean, yeah, they had a lot of rare games. I saw, I think I saw uh, Adventure Island 3 on the NES and uh, RC Pro Am 2. Um, so they had some rare stuff. Of course, they knew the value of them and these guys knew what was up. They knew what to charge for these games. So you we weren't gonna go in there and find something for nothing. But Jay was gonna try. <laughs> Pretty sure that's like a old school bootleg. I'm going through the games and whatnot on the shelf and uh, all of a sudden I look and Jay is gone. I can't find him anywhere. I look around and he's like, where is he? And I see this little blue hat above the shelf, like this, like on the, on the back shelf. And I, I, he's sniffing something out. He, what did he find? And so I go back there. I'm like, what is this, what is this guy doing? And he has found this little box full of Nintendo games that they haven't gone through yet and marked his price. They haven't looked up and find the, found the value of them and priced them. And uh, you know, like like any collector, anything not dark gray catches my eye. I see this uh, this light gray cartridge, pick it up, and nothing I've ever seen before. It was a a bootleg with all the light gun games on it. You know, your Hogan's Alley and Duck Hunt and things like that. I hand it to the dude, and I'm like, "How much for the game?" And he's like, hang on a second. He goes back to his little computer. He comes back to me and he says, $4.99. Oh, is that just the price you threw out because you couldn't find a list on it? Pretty much. Is, is that negotiable? I'm like, so is that negotiable? And the guy pretty much says, well, hit me with something. D depending on how you haggle, I'll let you. I'll, let I'll, you I'll go three. How about three? Three if he takes off his shirt? You can do. Three, three, I'll show you some nipple too. <laughs> <laughs> getting good. They're $34.99. Thank you. $2.99. Like so. $2.99? Alright, sweet. $2.99? Okay. Maybe he thought I was cute too. I don't know. It makes me mad because that doesn't happen to me ever. In fact, sometimes people just make an excuse to charge me more because they don't like my face. But when it goes to, comes to game hunting, it comes in handy. So I'm not going to complain too much. Because I'm a pimp. This is a, uh, this is a rare game. So I'm going through this box and I come across another pretty rare game, Bonk's Adventure on the NES. And uh, I mean, I know what this thing's worth. It's not cheap, but I'm hoping I get a little bit lucky with this one too. He asked the guy how much. He goes back, checks it up. The whole time we're both of us are thinking, just don't find the price, but just come back and say like four ninety nine, four ninety nine. Yeah, this game apparently is like seventy bucks. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I was confused. So why were you gonna tell us this? <laughs> um, well, I wasn't. I was just gonna see what y'all were gonna charge. I mean, yeah, price. Let's go back. Let's go back to four ninety nine. What happened? I was trying to, I was trying to pull one over on them. You know, maybe get a seventy dollar game for five dollars, ten dollars, and they weren't having it. They were gonna take the game and put it behind glass at that point once they saw the value of it. What I pick up at D-Pad, I got me a couple of classic games. Empire Strikes Back on the Atari 2600. Also picked me up an E.T. on Atari 2600. That uh, bootleg I got for $3. You had more luck than I did, but you know what? There's always tomorrow, so I'll try to one-up you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> well, we will see, won't we? We'll see. All right, we're finally in San Antonio. Obviously, it's a little too late to find games. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a little bit of sightseeing. San Antonio at night was pretty cool. Uh, the Alamo was closed, but you know, it's kind of cool. They got lights. They got lights hanging around the Alamo. Can anybody be professional here? I mean, really. We're gonna hit San Antonio hard. Have a little fun, kick back a little bit. We're gonna have a few drinks and play a few games. Just gonna enjoy the nightlife here in San Antonio. And tomorrow we're gonna hit the day fresh, ready to look for some games. Good times for all.
We just woke up, uh, getting ready to get our day started. Getting up to crack of noon. We're supposed to be up at about nine, but y'all saw the end of the last episode. <laughs> <laughs> We're just freaking lazy. We're gonna be meeting a fellow YouTuber named uh, 8-Bit Eric. The guy is funny, he's one of us, he blends in. Dude just fits right in with both of us. It's like we've known him since the 90s. Pretty much he fit right in with the rest of us foul mouth chuckleheads. So do you want to suck my nuts? <laughs> Dude, he's on the, he should f***ing come back. I'm gonna phone his wife because I don't like his gauge tears. Right now there's okay. a fat Chinese kid buying a game here somewhere that we can f***ing be buying. Lesbians? Look at the worst f*** box of all time, dude. Yeah, it's or whatever f***ing <laughs> zone <laughs> He's scared of shit out of me, dude. Yeah, H-E-B's yeah, yeah. devil though, dude. F***ing Geronimo. Fucking shit sandwich. There's a lot more cussing in this episode than usual. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, I got a bad mouth, dude. F that filthy bastard. <laughs> we got 8-Bit Eric. Just had lunch. Um, he knows of a place called the uh, Open Air Mission Flea Market. Um, he's never been there, and obviously we haven't either, so we're gonna go check that out first. A little kind of small rundown type of look to it, but you know what? Those are the places you find the games. Honestly, it looks like our kind of place. It's it's a little rundown, not a whole lot of people there, but that's perfect for us. Um, hoping there weren't any resellers there. So we go in, and one of the first vendors we see has this Genesis, and you think he wants like ten dollars for it or something? That's a. It sounds like there's keys in it. I, don't know. I like to cut them open, dude, and clean them out. Oh, oh shit, that is keys in there. No, that's those are like coins or something. Those are tokens. tokens. Those are tokens. I bet you Somebody thought it was an arcade machine was depositing quarters into it. I don't know what that was about. Maybe his kids got a hold of it or something. All right, I, I already see three games I want. Right when we walked in, there was a vendor who had a good number of games up there, and he had NES games, and he was selling them for three dollars a piece. Three? You do two? I was like. We do two a piece on him. He goes, I'll do two if you buy, you know, buy a bunch. Well, if you take a bunch, yeah. Yeah. Eric, Eric kind of lit up a little bit and got five or six games and, and walked out of there pretty happy, actually. He was pretty happy at $2 a game, so. That's my kind of place. Thanks, guys. If you're ever in a situation where you see a stack of games on a table and you want to buy five or six of them, ask the price for just one. Because if you ask the price for all of them up front, they're going to give you some number that you're not going to want to pay. Ask the price of just one. And if the guy says $3 for just one game, then grab the pile and say, okay, well, will you do two a piece? Now that I've seen how to will and deal, I think it's gonna be interesting to, to look for more games. It's hot, so I'm thirsty, and I go up to the concession stand to, to get everybody some drinks. And all of a sudden, I hear these three knuckleheads behind me like freaking out, Jay, 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 and I turn around, I'm like, what? They go, dude, she's got a Tigger suit right here. So I turned to the lady, I was like, how much for the Tigger suit? She's like, five bucks. I'm like, why aren't y'all buying it then? What is wrong with y'all? You need permission? We're walking out with a Tigger suit at that point. You see a Tigger suit for $5, you're buying it. No questions asked. Okay, here's five bucks, thank you. Flea Market, I got Oakage on uh, the PS2, and I also picked up a box Sega Genesis uh, Aladdin. I paid three dollars. Uh, I just didn't really see anything else that I wanted. There was a lot of, a lot of good finds there. Uh, for some reason, they were closing down a little bit earlier, so I wish we would have had the chance to shop around more because there, it looked like there was some good deals there. It's just, I guess, the Easter weekend. I can't complain. I picked up Paperboy in sixty in sixty four for uh, three dollars. And I got a Tigger suit for five. <laughs> Stuff Mario, Kid Cool, Dragon Spirit, Captain Skyhawk, Marble Madness, and Fazanadu. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Faxanadu? Yeah, Faxanadu. And you paid $2 a piece for all of them, didn't you? Yeah, you also forgot to get your Sega Genesis. I didn't forget. You just chose not to. I chose not to. See, like, not even two minutes away, and there's another pawn shop right there. Cash America. Why? I'll be right back. Oh, oh. If they have anything, I'll come get you. That's Stay weird. in the car. What are you <laughs> doing? Stay in the car. 
It's like a drug raid, dude. Go, go see if they have anything. Oh, shit. It looks like they do, dude. Just along with the DVDs right dude, there. Dude, pawn shops. Yeah. You know, you got thrift stores. You got yeah. it. One of my best scores was I found about 40 games at a uh, Salvation Army and paid a dollar a piece for them. Like, right. right now, I'm, like, on an NES phase and then an Atari phase. Right. But then I'm, like... I need to get more Super Nintendo games because I only have like 20 of those. Right. I'm like, I need to get them. Well, see, like Super Nintendo games, I've only got about 40. Okay, I had nothing. We're going to another place that Eric says that he goes to a lot to find his Nintendo games, and that's called Propaganda Palace. I think it's one of the best ones in San Antonio. Off to Propaganda Palace, Eric swears by this place. There is a ton of video games here. I mean, it's it's like a mini game over. He had a lot of stuff. He had Gyromite in the box. He had a Rob Odyssey games. He had Vetrix games. I've been looking for Vetrix games. So that was kind of cool. They have almost anything you could think of there. Um, I've been there a few times. It's one of my favorite places to shop. I mostly go for the $5 games for the NES. You mind if I open this up? Take no, go ahead. We got the... The buttons, the colored buttons, the How two spinning this? tops, the hands, the motor, everything. How much is this? Uh, by itself, I'd probably do about a bill for one in the box completely like that. You don't see these things, man. No, I know. Trust me, I know. Yeah, they're way, way rare. Nobody took care of them. Nobody kept them. Actually, I picked up a Rob, just the robot, for 20 the other day. So. That's a steal. Yeah. They go for about 100 to 100. But I don't have any of the accessories. You don't have the accessories. The owner, AJ, really cool dude. He answers every question that you ask. He'll talk about games, talk about anything. He'll just sit there and you know shoot the breeze with you about video games. When I was born, video games were just barely getting going. The very first video game machine was out, the Magnavox Odyssey. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, in 1975, when I'm three years old, my dad, who's been a salesman his whole life, starts working for some unknown company called Atari. <laughs> Nobody knows who Atari is. He had one of those pong machines in a bag and he'd go from electronic shop to TV store and all that and he'd be selling. So a few years later when I was old enough, they got me one of those for Christmas. They had just come out that Christmas, 1977, they were new and dude, I was in heaven. I mean that was the greatest time I ever had in my life. I didn't really find anything that um, I was interested in getting. It just seems like every game that I asked about was kind of a little bit more than I was willing to pay. Had a lot of awesome stuff, and it's just one of those places that if you're looking for a certain game, just go in and get it, have it in your hand. You get to test it out right there. He lets you play the games, so you know they work. I picked up Kung Fu and Gorilla War. Never played this one. Played that one, five bucks each. Good for him. Leaving Propaganda Palace, Eric got a few things. Um, most everything I, I saw I wanted a little out of my price range, so I walked out empty-handed. We're going to another Game Over video games here in San Antonio. <laughs> wow. I used to DJ, so I was... Tell them uh, where you uh, DJ'd. Yeah. And Our I was, buddies. Yeah. yeah. Wow. How did I f***ing know I don't know. <sighs> Jay used to work at a male strip club. Go ahead and laugh. I got laid all the time, so. It doesn't count when it's dudes, oh, though. Wow. <laughs> what, was, what was her name? Amanda? <laughs> we never like to go into a store, camera's blazing. You filming? Mm -hmm. So we just, uh, we went to GameStop and kind of got busted filming. We always like to call in ahead and say, can we come in and shoot? And we called the San Antonio's Game Over store there and asked them if we could come in. And they said no, unlike the Austin store who said, all right. As soon as I walked in the door, I took three steps and noticed that they had one of the rarest Nintendo games out there. It was a Myriad six in one cartridge. He said, dude, get over here. I went over there, I checked it out, and it was amazing, man, because, you know, how often do you get to see something like that in person? It was really cool. Pure gold. I, I saw 9.99, and my first reaction was $9.99. They wouldn't let us film, but they did agree to let us take a couple of still shots of, of the Myriad cartridge. One of our cameramen is a little shady, 
So when he's supposed to be taking still shots, he actually had video rolling, so good job to Dongo. It was actually marked $999, and at that point I breathed a sigh of relief knowing that he wasn't gonna get that game. $1,000 was just, you know, just a hair <laughs> over what I could afford, so wasn't walking out of there with it. Um, unfortunately, I can't pay $999 for a game. I don't even like spending 20 on a game. If I win the lottery, I'm gonna go buy that game just to rub it in y'all's face. <laughs> just remember, never, never pay retail. If yeah. you can avoid paying retail, do not do it. We should just ask the manager, who do we gotta sleep with around here? I know, that right? price on <laughs> <laughs> All right, man, we're gonna drop you off, man. It's good, it good hanging out. It's been a long day, found a couple things, um, but time to turn in. Going back to the hotel, starting fresh tomorrow. Why are you shaking your head? Day one in San Antonio. Fruitful for Eric. This is 8-Bit Eric's backyard. These games are mine. I got the Nintendo Power. How ridiculous do these guys look? I didn't really get anything, but there's always day two. And tomorrow, that's where I shine. I always shine on day twos. It's a little thing that I have. I see no reason why I can't continue. You said you better not wake up with Daryl in your bed, right? Right. Okay. Ghetto in Jaws Hotel. Pretty effing ghetto. So I, I can't wake you up by slapping it on your hip? Oh, oh you will fucking die. You will, I will have to call moms and pops and be like, your son's dead. I will, fuck, I will kill you if you do that. I stayed at this Motel 6 one time, dude. Was it bad there? It was okay, it's just sometimes there's shady people that. No, no pun intended. <laughs> Shady people that, that were up in there, dude. And like, you know how you have those connector rooms with the doors? Yeah. Dude, like, I swear to God, I was staying there, and like, I woke up like at four, and you just hear, oh, oh, oh. oh. It's not like they're making a porno in there, dude. Bussies flea market. Bussies? Bussies or Bussies? 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 I just know it has a f***ing armadillo on the front. Gary Bussies. Gary Bussies. That's what I always think. <laughs> Gary Busey. Bussies is a flea market right outside of San Antonio and it's in between actually it's kind of in between San Antonio and New Brunfield so I really don't want really to head back in New Brunfield direction boy what kind of bullshit is this this it's called New Brunsfold what the fuck? he looks like a like a busted slash <laughs> but we don't have any choice we're going to this Busey's flea market We're sitting here at Busey's. We've been here for a few minutes and there are a lot of people with a lot of games here. It's actually pretty impressive. One of the best things is I don't see a lot of resellers. I don't see a lot of people overcharging things like that. I gotta get some more money. This lady was selling a Nintendo 64 with a Star Fox in it. How much for the 64? Five. I'll take it. There you go. She didn't really have any other games, but what she did have is something else that I really like, and that's old toys. And I never knew what that Yeah, that's, that's what he He didn't know what it was either. Hey, uh, was this Razar? I come across Razar. Or is it Toka? Oh shit, they got turtles? Yeah, they do. Freaking cool, man. I'm thinking about it. Well, Shady J undercut me on a top loader at Bussy's Flea Market. What are you asking for your top loader? It's a $60. That's the original dog bone controller, all your hookups, and it got a 30 day warranty. I'm thinking of fighting you for it. Man, I gotta ask. We take $50? I could probably do 50, dude, but without the control, I'll give you a regular square one. Huh? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
I wasn't having any of it. Can I get it for 55? Can you get it for fuck you? <laughs> Eric did not like that at all. I, you go 55? Meet me in the middle. 55, we can run the set. All right, man. Deal. Oh, you bastard. <laughs> deal on That's that. That's a good deal, though. Jade whips out the money. All right. And I'm like, oh, that mother. Eric said I undercut him. Um, I mean, we're both sitting there with our thumbs up our butts talking about, oh, well, maybe I need to get it, maybe I need to get it. I spoke first. I think Eric was a little hesitant. I did think he was kind of teetering on whether or not he wanted to spend the money in the first place. Caught you slipping, bitch. <laughs> Son of a You're officially my YouTube enemy now. <laughs> Finders keepers, Eric's a weeper. Hopefully the rest of the day will be better for me. Kind of boils my balls a little bit. We're still at Busey's. We run across this, this guy who uh, has a shop. How much are you asking for that? On that one, 20 bucks. 20? This guy knows what's up. I mean, even at flea markets, if you walk into a specialty shop who sells games, and that's all they sell, guess what? They know what the stuff's worth. How much for Rescue Rangers or Ring King? This underneath Battle Toads. Ring King, I'll do, you know what, that's five, and that one's five, also. I'll do, I'll take both of these. The Chippendale for five dollars, that was a pretty good deal because I've seen that for like ten or more. Found Rebel Salt on the shelf, and I'm like, asked the dude, I go, hey, let me see that, and finally, just, you know, nobody was here to take it from me this time. Nobody was here to grab it with their stupid freaking meat Claws. Guess what? It's the wrong game. I don't think I have it. No, I oh, the one Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was at that point the light bulb went off in my head and said, "This weekend is a complete and utter fail for me." Leaving Busey's, you know, the guy's got a game or two. Um, overall, I'd say I'm the big winner so far this morning. Top loader. $55 and a Nintendo 64 and Star Fox. I still beat your price though, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, I don't give a f though, there is. And Busey's, I walked away with a whole whopping handful of Ninja Turtle figure. <laughs> is that all you left with? Are you kidding me? That's not all you left with. <laughs> a Ninja Turtle figure? It really is. <laughs> you find the deals or you get dealt with. You can actually exit this 37 towards uh, Johnson City. Johnson, Johnson City. <laughs> <laughs> I heard that the people there are very testy. <laughs> <laughs> I heard they can be dicks. <laughs> they can be, quite, they be cocky at times. <laughs> hey, but Eric is going to take us to a relatively new shop that he's been to a few times inside the Highway 90 flea market. Highway 90. This is going to be the place where I find something. Who am I kidding? I'm not finding anything here either. So we walk into this shop and we're looking around for about 32 seconds and one of the guys behind the counter says, yeah, I recognize you guys from, from YouTube. So that was pretty neat. It's really cool to run into people like that and, and, and know that they're fans and that they watch. So how, I mean, how did you come across it? Well, I actually saw it as a, so one of like the popular guys, because I'm barely getting into the game as well. Was it Gangster81? Like, yeah, he favored it. And I think that's actually giving you guys a lot of hits. How random is that, really? At this point in the trip, I had to buy a game, any game, and I saw Streets of Rage 2 on the Sega Genesis, complete box with manual. I had to get it, it was $10 reasonable you know i have one and three so i needed two anyway so i got it ten dollars i shorted the guy a dollar though i was like i gave him nine dollars i was like it's ten bought me a cubert there for five bucks i don't have cubert yet Actually, i've never played cubert that game suck after we left this shop eric took us to a couple more places inside this flea market and it's pretty much a bust We're done with game hunting in San Antonio, and I'm glad one, honestly, I'm glad one of us got something out of it. Um, 
well, two of us if you want to count Eric, but who wants to do that? Uh, so we're heading on out of this uh, flea market here, and we're going to downtown San Antonio. The video game gods shined down on Jay the whole weekend, and I got smited. What are you gonna do? What can you do other than to make Jay dress up as Tigger and make an ass of himself? Unfortunately, that backfired. Not one female or anybody even acknowledged Shady J's existence until he put on that Tigger outfit. Beforehand, he was just some hairy, weird looking wolf man, son of a bitch. But as soon as he put on the Tigger outfit, he had bitches left and right coming after him. Like they were like squirrels just trying to get a nut. Like literally. We think we're gonna make this guy look like a complete and utter jerk, but unfortunately, he became a chick magnet. A freaking Tigger outfit, are you kidding me? Why didn't I know about this when I was 19? For some reason, we ended up downtown for over two hours of him just walking around like Tigger. Billy and Eric were green with envy. It was pretty freaking ridiculous. Apparently they don't like when Jay gets all the attention. That's just the way game hunting go. All right, dude, so this is where we drop you off, man. It is cool hanging yeah. out. Good times. Yeah. I think the victor in the end, even though I don't want to admit it, Jay had a good, a good day. He had the top loader for 55, that son of a bitch. And then he ended up stealing the show with his Tigger outfit. Damn sluts. Cause I'm a peel. Overall, San Antonio, in my opinion, was a winning trip. Some of us just won more than others. <laughs> Gary Busey. You know, we've been spending a lot of time uh, away from the Metroplex recently, but now we're heading right into our own backyard. There's a flea market that we never even heard of before, uh, and actually Spivey introduced us to it, and you may remember Spivey from My Favorite Things. It's a video on the channel. Female lifeguards with water balloon chest and mayonnaise covered midgets. It doesn't look like much. One of the first vendors Billy sees that has video games is this lady with some Super Nintendo games. And right off the bat, I see like some uh, some good Super Nintendo games there. Uh, one of those being Secret of Mana. Usually when you see a, someone who has a bunch of games and they're all kind of lined up on the table, they usually know the prices, but this lady, kind of the exception to the rule. 777, seven, seven, that's 28. Uh, seven apiece. We go five a piece, I'll buy all 20 bucks. Six. That'll work good, yeah. All, right, that'll work. all the Nintendo Super Nintendo games I was actually I already have. And I know Jay is actually trying to build up his Super Nintendo collection, so even though I found them first, I went ahead and let him have them. According to this like like a month and a half after we were actually there, so I don't remember what the hell I got. Not bad, Castlevania 4, Secret Man and Super Metroid, Earthworm Jim, and X-Men. The day's just getting better. Run across another vendor, has a complete in-box Maniac Mansion. You take five? Okay. Take five? Six. Six. It's new. I do six. Everything's included, manual sleeve, everything. It's great. We've only been in this flea market for probably around 10 minutes, and even if we don't find anything the rest of the day, it's totally been worth it. One kind of big problem that we're having is the, the, the communication issue. Um, 
A lot of these guys don't speak very good English and we don't speak any Spanish whatsoever. I mean, I can order from Taco Bell and that's about it. I'm looking right now at a whole table full of N64 games in these little cases with the manuals. $10. He says $10. Most of the time, are you effing serious? Did you just take my cake? You just, dude, did you, oh, my, my cake. No, I don't want it now. Is there more cake? Normally at a flea market, when you see N64 games and someone's selling them for $10 a piece, that's a little high. But with these, the selection of titles, $10 a piece with the manuals and in these cases, it's a no brainer, it's a bargain. Harvest Moon 64 and Special Edition Zelda, all those in these cases with the manuals. I gotta get this one too. I'll probably come back next week with more money, more cash in my pocket, and try to clean this guy out. Pick me up Mario Party and Mario Party 2 for 10 bucks each. He says he has a bunch of Nintendo games in the box. We're gonna get some of those games. He's gonna bring them next week. Billy kinda got screwed in Austin and San Antonio. He came away with, I think, Ninja Turtle figure, I believe it was. So, um, Billy needed this. It, it got his morale back up. He got a, he's got got his head back in the game. We had a good day at this flea market, and what I am most impressed about is the fact that this place is completely untouched by resellers. We'll be back. Definitely be back. That place was not even touched by resellers. Nobody knew about it. It was an untapped resource. We can we can thank Spivey for that one. He's the one who told yeah, us about it. He did tell us about it. And then he's coming midgets. Okay, what's going on, seriously? It's Saturday, right? This is always like this, doesn't matter what day. Even on a Saturday, what? We got a tip from a tipster, and the tip was that we need to go to a... A store just north of Dallas in Rowlett. And so we're gonna go check this place out, see what they got. Hey, what's up, Sean Casillo here playing Magic in Rowlett. Woo! Welcome to Game Master. There's some guys playing magic here, and I don't know anything about magic. Um, some people would call them nerds. I wouldn't call them nerds, I mean, because what I do is kind of nerdy, right? I just don't get it. Somebody please explain this to me. I don't understand. Is it... It was like 16, first time I ever... Uh... Brought my first Dragon Ball Z deck. All right. I uh, I can't do it. Like, yeah, I can. No! <laughs> this store is is in a uh, I guess a smaller part of the Metroplex, and the the people here they just they got nowhere else to take their game. So literally anyone who's getting rid of anything retro brings their stuff here it's american video i mean it's you know you're gonna get it? I, I think i'm gonna pass i'm gonna get it then okay what is it oh it's one of the old stickers that somebody plastered on it oh uh, yeah good luck with that you better get some gig on and, uh, oh i think i can get this you can stay together you can peel the uh, original label it's just, it's just you got a grabbing stick, one of those? Uh, I can get to it. I, I can, I can, um, I can give you a boost. Where did you find that? Uh, there's some on the shelf. I'm gonna get this one. It comes with the manual. This is two ninety nine. So I'm over there talking, and you're just rummaging through things, and uh, that's what I do. <laughs> okay. Widget. Widget. Guy, I'm gonna kill him. <laughs> Do you want the death touch? Let's see it. Or what is it? I'm about to give him a death yeah. touch in a minute. <laughs> They're death bots, death I'm bots. sorry. We just happened to peek around the counter and there are probably 300 freaking retro games just just, just sitting there. Yeah, this is one of the things I gotta go through. I got another system in there as long as... Yeah. Oh, sweet. Yeah, Superman, Freeway. 
Yeah, I gotta go through all well, this look, you stuff. got some more Nintendo games down there. You're holding yeah, out I, on us. I do. I got tons of stuff, man. Well, bring them up here. Well. <laughs> well, nothing. Let's go. And we're like, dude, when were you going to tell us about these games? And, oh, we hadn't gone through them. And I'm like, pull the games up, dude. We need to see what's going on here. They haven't had a chance to go through them, look them up, price them, you know, look through the pricing guide and see how much they're worth. These places, you know, if they have something rare, they want to be able to, to, to sell it for a fair price. <laughs> Walked out of the store um, with uh, a couple of games, so not too bad. It's another place in our own backyard that we can go to um, and check out every so often. So, we're happy to have uh, found it. Woo, what's going on? Perusing Craigslist, I run across a posting that's actually two weeks old, but I went ahead and emailed the guy just in case. He says that he's got a lot more systems, a lot more games, and for us to come by and basically check it out. So we're headed that way right now. I can get naked just to put something over my junk no, for the shock factor. I'm not insinuating that at all. I'm absolutely calling you out on it. Guilty as charged. <laughs> yeah, I got an Odyssey. I knew you guys were looking for an Odyssey, maybe. I'm Billy, oh, man. man. Kenny, nice to meet you. Jay, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Jay. We get there, we pull up, he opens up his garage, and there's the Odyssey 2 in a box sitting on the table. I mean, I have a few things here. I don't know what else you're interested in, but I do have more stuff than this. Uh, I've had a lot of this since the late, late 70s, early 80s, and you know even up till now. Uh, a lot of it is in the box or has the original pamphlets or box or promotional posters with them. Sweet. Even business replies and the original games with you know your inserts and your type of stuff like this. But this is what an Odyssey looked like. I don't know if you guys know how much you know about them or whatever. I see on the table that there's an Odyssey 2 kissed by the light of the sun as the garage opens. I knew that I had to have it. I mean, if you guys really want to get into some stuff, you yes. can look through there, so there might be a hundred things here, but if you guys, I can let down the attic because I've been doing stuff and I can hand down, right there pretty close to me is like maybe a thousand games and systems. Well, did he say attic? I, I, I come in the attic? Opens up the attic door, shimmies up the ladder, and just starts handing his boxes down. Not to toss for here in a minute. I know, right? What kind of PC oh, yeah. and Dreamcast yeah. and maybe TurboGrafx-16? I don't know. There you go. That'll help. <laughs> uh, no, you got it. That's cool. Yeah. What is it covered in the box? When did you get that down? Just now, and I saw it first, so slow down. Hey, I think he's got out of the box here. Yeah, I know. So go I get it. You, I see what you're doing down there. <laughs> the Channel F Fairchild system, it was cut, and it, it, was, it has cartridges yeah. in it. A Channel F in the box? Are you kidding me? Let me show you the uh, controllers. They're kind of Wii like. But they were pretty, they are actually more sophisticated than the Atari 2600 ones because you could move around just like you'd do, you know, and then you could fire by hitting, but you could also rotate your tank. I'm getting it, it's mine, no question. You just don't run across these every day, especially in the box. It's your lucky day, 40 bucks if you want. 40 bucks, I'll yep. do that. Sound good? It'll work. Good. But the more, that we go through here, everything that I'm going to hand down, I've got two of, or that's the reason I'm getting rid of them. Because my wife was like, really need four NESs? The Odyssey you said was how much? Uh, 40 bucks for the Odyssey. Okay. How, what would you do on both of these right here? Five bucks for both of them. Um, five dollars for every one of them. All of them, the whole bunch. Five for all of them? For every one of them. How about that? Yeah. Are you getting the Commodore? Well, I'm being silly. I'm tapped out. It's up to you. Are you getting the Commodore? I'm tapped out. It's up to you. You're getting the Commodore. <laughs> you know, without the disk drive, 40 bucks. You're good to go. Hey, you know what? You can have whatever damage we dig up, too. 40, 40, 40, 3, 10. So that's 130. 130. Oh, one. 
135, 136. Gather up right on the table what we want to or possibly want to get. And then what we do is we kind of just go and discuss our strategy. What are you thinking? I'm thinking, um, I think I'm getting all of them. You serious? Yeah. Count that, please. 40, 60, 80, 100, 20, 40. Looks good to me. Awesome. Good job, guys. I'm glad I actually contacted this guy. I mean, you're just not going to find deals like this every day. Walked away from Kenny's house. I bought the Fairchild Channel F system boxed. He said if I bought the Channel F, he would throw in the Atari 800 for free. I rule. I rule. Oh, don't forget the free. You didn't even say anything about it that at the time, but I got a free Atari 800. How does that make you feel? You know what? I'm not too upset because he actually threw in the disk drive for the Commodore 64 for free for me. So. Is, I mean, is this what it feels like to get something for free? <sighs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna savor this for, for, for a while. I'm gonna savor this for as long as I can. This, this, this is feeling I have right now. This, this is like. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I really, don't, I really don't know what to say. Monday morning, up early. We are uh, taking a mini road trip. This is just a one day deal today. We are heading to um, Round Rock to uh, meet our special guest, Gamester81. Your mama's so fat, her blood type's red goo. We did a little research before we uh, took this road trip and we found a place in Belton, Texas. It's kind of on our way to Round Rock, so why not hit it up? I thought we were in Terrell. What the hell would make you think that? I called the dude up, I go, hey, man, uh, I'm looking for like old Nintendo games. And what, Nintendo? Nintendo? He actually says this, Nintendo? Nintendo? So, I'm, you know what, I'm not doing the hat. Maybe the sign's twisted around. What if this guy just drug us out here to kill us? Oh, that's great. This guy basically has a house that has been turned into a thrift store. This dude was really cool to open up for us on a Monday when he's usually closed. I'm kind of feeling a little obligated to purchase something. I just hope I can find something here. This guy has so much cool stuff. I'm looking around, I see old board games. I see old military uniforms, NSYNC dolls, Pac-Man mugs. Just, I mean, anything you can think of, this dude had it. We've made it very clear that our inspiration for this show was American Pickers, and now I actually feel like I'm in an episode of American Pickers. 1980, that's freaking awesome. I'm hoping I'd run across something like some old Transformers or G.I. Joes. Now even I can make my own shakes at home. I see a Genesis. Genesis, I think. Obviously the first thing we ask for are video games and he pulls out what he has and I'm expecting him to just have this box load of Nintendo games or something and basically say, well, I don't know, Nintenders, um, here, five bucks, just give me five bucks for the whole box. No, each one of these games had prices on them marked. I was hoping to get a bunch of crap for nothing, but it's not gonna be the case. I thought you go two a piece and I'll buy all of them, including, I mean, both of these also. Can you do that? That'll work. I got X-Men Complete in Box, Sega Genesis for five bucks. Spiritual Warfare on the Sega Genesis. Think I paid five for that one also. I got ColecoVision games for two bucks a piece. I want to know how to win at all these video games. So I picked up some literature. This guy's shop was neat. He had so much stuff there. 
God, that was a really cool place. I'm really glad he uh, opened it up and let us in. But now, eyes on the prize. We're back on the road, and we're heading to Round Rock, meet up with Gamester. More me. I knew you were going to do that. More me. So we get to Round Rock. The trip was a lot shorter than we had anticipated. We got a couple of hours before uh, Gamester 81 meets us. We're going to stop at Interspace Caverns and uh, try to learn about some geology. Using groups like this, there's one or two knuckleheads who always have to crack up, make wisecracks, and things like that. And there, there, there weren't any in this group, surprisingly. It looks like a puddle. Yes. Have you ever run across any fraggles? I'm oh, sorry, no fraggles down here. D don't they say if you can't spot the a-hole, you are the a-hole, though? The deeper we go into this cave the lower the maturity level drops. It went from wisecracks to Fartfest 2011 in here. <laughs> and we are the deepest we've been on the entire tour. We're about 70 feet below the surface, guys. Her figures seem like they're a little bit off. I did the math while we were walking down there. Just something's a little off, I don't know. First of all, she's all talking about how Texas used to be under the ocean or whatever. Texas didn't used to be on no underwater. How come there's no freaking fish bones laying around in, in the forest? You gotta use your head. You gotta think about these things, lady. I think I might know a little bit more about geology than her. I think this is a this is man-made. Just digging this hole in the middle of freaking round rock. Oh, come see the cave of wonders and <laughs> Tours over. Off to uh, game over in Round Rock. Meet Mr. Gamester81. For him to take time out of his busy schedule to hang with us, man, it's freaking awesome. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, what's up, brother? Yeah. How's it going, man? Oh man, it's going good. Just now, it's so. good. <laughs> I know, you guys making it out here? What's the deal? Billy's a lot taller in real life than he appears on video. And, and Jay just has one of those personalities that is so open. And you know, I'm not surprised he gets free games. What's up, man? I'm John. John? Nice to meet you. Eddie, you with these teas? Yeah. yeah, he's with us knuckleheads. These guys. Knuckleheads. It was a pretty amazing story. You walk in, there's there's cases of systems on the wall, and not only Nintendo, but the ColecoVision, Commerce 64, Intellivision, a lot of box games. I was amazed at how many box games they had and how good of condition these games were. So, blown away when I walked into Game Over. Talisman's classic, though. They also have a Darkling Duck for the TurboGrafx, too. I guess they're terrible games, but it's still fun. I love they slow and can charge them out. Uh, on the they slow yeah. too. Huh? They slow to two is probably the best one in the franchise. Yeah. I love that one. It's been many, 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 many hours. Remember that. the show? Yeah. Um, Adam Sandler yeah. started on that one, didn't he? Uh, I don't know if he did or not. I wouldn't doubt it. We're in here just uh, hanging out with Gamester, and he's just a really awesome guy to hang out with and talk to, man. I mean, because his video game knowledge is just off the charts. Burger time? Yeah, it's about the There's a sequel for the Intellivision called Diner. Which is only released on the television, which is a pretty yeah, rare I game. Yeah, I know. I want to get that game. Yeah, but I'll be getting Oh, shit, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? Ah, uh, he got me on that one. <laughs> I picked up a couple things. I got uh, Tron Deli Discs uh, for the television. I don't know what's with Jay, man. He always hooks up people with a discount. He's not afraid to go, hey, man, I'll pay you this for this. You know, he's not afraid to take no for an answer. I think that's really helpful. He has the balls, and the, the balls will steal to do it. So to speak, but he definitely hooked me up with a couple dollars off of Tron Deli Disc. So thank you, Jay, for that. And I also got a Game Over t shirt. So whenever I'm at places like this, I always try to pick up a t shirt. Grab me Die Hard Eddie. I picked up Die Hard. It's actually a really, really hard game to find, believe it or not. I got it for 15 bucks, and considering I was in a retail store, that's actually below market value on it. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm buying it again. That'll be my third one. I think that's going to be my bit. A wall of ETs. Yes. I'm buying ET on $2,600. I'll, I'll give you ET here. That'll work. You're saving it. That'll work. <laughs> you just got a free ET, dude. I know. Awesome. Hey, you know what? I want one of those too. There. I want to see if it really does taste like Mega Man. <laughs> I got the classic game. Your mother's classic. ET the Extraterrestrial for free. Best find of the day so far, I think, has been 
ET on 2600. There we are. <laughs> I'll be right here. <laughs> I see some stuff in here, but I'm gonna save my money. For some reason, every time we come down to the Austin area, Billy just wants to wait, 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 save his money, save his money, and he never winds up with anything. We're gonna to try to hit up a couple more places while we have Gamester in our grasp. I'm gonna take my clothes off. I say it's getting hot in your mom. There's a fresh beat, rap bitch. Dude, you know how I am whenever I'm throwing down mad raps. I gotta be in the mood. That's right. God, I'm not in the mood. Game chases in games to set the stage, gonna make the play to get the games that are great. <laughs> quit, quit trying to rap. <laughs> don't, don't ever do that again, please. Heading off to a place called Game Fellas. Never been there. We're gonna check it out. Unfortunately, they didn't want us bringing in a camera into the store. It happens, you know, but the craziest thing actually happened. We're, we're looking at the games like we always do when we go to a store like this, and there's this freaking out of nowhere, this alien just dropped in and took the game, snatched it away, and just slapped the crap out of Jay, pinned me up against the wall, and was about to probe me or something, and then Gamester just like out of nowhere transforms into some, some car and, and, and runs him over, runs this alien over. Me and Jay are looking at each other like, we cannot believe this. That is not something you see every day, let me tell you. And it just absolutely drives me crazy that we did not have our cameras. All right. We don't have as much time as we thought we were gonna have with GameStar today. So we are actually heading to somebody's apartment. A uh, guy we found on Craigslist and we're gonna go check this dude's stuff out and see what he has. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Yeah, what's going um, on, dude, Jay? Hey, you. What's up, man? What's up? Awesome. Hey, bro, thanks. Nice to you. Right, it's kind of messy, guy, like, Two dudes living here, so oh, expect good. two dudes living here. All good, all good. All right. Yeah, if I knew you were coming, like, hit me up like two months sooner. I had like Neo Geos and Amigos and Commodores and all that. Good Where? Stuff. So, nice. Uh, Overall, this guy he opened his bedroom and there's just a ton of stuff, a lot of retro stuff. This kid knew a lot of about old school systems. I saw a ton of Pong clones that I'd never seen before. Okay, I never actually met you in person. Oh, you know me? Yeah, yeah. Well, I've watched your stuff. Like, <laughs> that's hilarious. I mean, when he said, I, I was like, shit. <laughs> that's that's funny. Ass. Yeah, like I had a TV Games 15. Yeah. And uh, I, I had no idea what the fuck it was. And I looked on YouTube. And you're like, you used the film. I was like, God damn, he has everything. <laughs> that's awesome. And he, yeah, so I was like, cool. Now I know what I need to look for. And I found it and played up. So. Right on. Cool. Yeah. You got some cool stuff, that's man. Like, you got some cool shit. shit. Sold this huge lot, uh, a Sega Master System in box, Commodore, uh, and a Neo Geo for 200 bucks. With like all their games, one, like at least one system each had some game unopened. I was like 15 at the time, and I was like, man, 200 bucks? That's crazy. I look back on it and I yeah, would stab yeah. myself. He's just selling everything in his room so he could buy more video game stuff. What I do is I. You know, try to go underneath retail and just a little bit above eBay so I can have that medium so I can work yeah. with it. And he's pretty hardcore into games. Uh, I got that. Yeah, I'm cool. working on Zero. He's still working on this right here. Yeah, Bass. And yeah, as soon as we get done with this, I'm um, doing Willy and then the Mega Man. It's cool, uh, got a full sleeve. Yeah. yeah, big sleeve. And then when we're working to the jacket, I actually got the uh, Intellivision manual of Donkey Dude, Kong. Dude, check this out, guys. That's awesome. So. That's okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I'm going to finish it's my classic. hands with Mario and Luigi. So. Nice, man. Yeah, I'm a massive That's dedication. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Believe it or not, like the tiny ass towns have some of the coolest shit. Yeah. Because a lot of those people are just stuck there and they can't leave, so they're just collecting these things, trying of... to resell it, and there's just no interest in those little spots. You get a lot of vintage stuff, which is awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, awesome. mainly Pong. Yeah. I'm real big into Pong. Cool. John, I got to take off, man. I'm sorry. All right. Awesome, dude. Nice meeting yeah, you. Yeah, you too. Yeah, sure. You too. It's been fun. Yeah, for sure. Unfortunately, I had to cut it short a little bit, take off. Unfortunately, I had some things I'd take care of for work while I was there in Austin. But it was awesome hanging out with Billy and Jay, and I hope to do it again soon. Uh, it was really, really, really good meeting the dude. He's a real cool dude. Um, hey, th thanks. Thanks for your time, John. Appreciate it. We're, we're honored for him to actually take the time out of his busy schedule to hang out with us. Uh, I haven't played Sega Master in like three months. One thing I've taken interest in is his uh, Sega Master System collection. 
I don't have a master system. I don't have any master system games. So I'm going to see uh, if I can wheel and deal something here. I want this. Would you do everything for 80? We did it for 85. 85. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I wound up getting the Master System and every Master System game he had. I see this game Strider. I don't know a lot about the console, but I want to say that might be a little bit rare. I did see something there that caught my eye, and that was a uh, Magical Quest um, in the box complete on Super Nintendo. Uh, he was only asking $12 for it. I also picked up Jungle Book on the NES. It was actually one of the last games ever made for the original Nintendo Entertainment System, so I wanted to pick that one up. Okay. Awesome. This is the Tommy Blip. It's uh, one of the first generation handheld consoles. It's a Pong system that's mechanized. It's on a ball and pin socket. It's really freaking weird. So you hit the surf button. Oh. Walk through with the Master System. A couple of deals from uh, Game Over. Old Man River down in Belton. Let's go home. I'm tired. It's been a long day, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, this trip was not about what we were going to be coming back with. It was about meeting up with uh, Gamester81 and just having some good times. I mean, what you see on his channel is pretty much what you get. He's genuine, down to earth, and it was so fun hanging out with him. I just want to learn! And we look at each other like, yeah. <laughs> we just tooted on tour. <laughs> tooted on tour. <laughs> Good times. We heard about this flea market called Bird's Flea Market in Cleburne, Texas, so we're gonna go out there. Rumor has it, it's an untapped source. So we're heading down 174, and, and we just took the wrong turn, had to backtrack. Well, the main flea market we came down here to check out is actually only open on Wednesdays. Makes no sense to me, I don't know. But we were able to find an unmarked flea market. We had no idea it was here, and it's on the side of the road. Unfortunately, it looks like it's pretty much dead. I mean, there's like two or three tents up, but you know, we'll go ahead and get out. And I mean, we're here, right? Might as well go check it out. I'm about to hit you, Billy, I swear to God. <laughs> oh, this lady has a lot of stuff here. She's got Super Nintendo, she's got Nintendo, she's got Sega Genesis, she's got Atari, and she's only selling them for $2 a piece. Contra Force. Why not? I'll get that. Contra Force. I come across the rare and elusive Contra Force on the Nintendo Entertainment System. I don't get that one either. Crazy creature? Dude, I've been looking for Contra Force. Have you? Yeah. The look on his face was freaking priceless. He he had he he had this look of utter disbelief that I actually found a game like that. And on top of that, the lady was only asking two bucks for it. I'm a huge Contra fan. I've been looking for Contra Force for a while now. I've got all the old school games. Now granted, Contra Force isn't really a Contra game. None. You're good. Let me see that real quick. Dude, come on. Dude. Hey, this is one of the few games. <laughs> it's Chippendale 2 and this. I know, but I found it first. So Billy's sitting here whining, wah, blah, blah. Oh, I wanted that game. I got a list, this and that. And I was like, okay, I'll give you the game. Unbelievable. Here, you can have it, dude. Yes. I knew he wanted it. I was actually going to buy it and give it to him. It's two bucks, but 
you know, he was crying that much. I said, screw him, let him pay for it himself. So me and Jay are looking through the games to make sure that we're not overlooking anything else like a Bubble Bubble Part 2 or a little Samson or something like that. And I look over here to the right and lo and behold, freaking the cameraman, the Dongo, has put the camera on the table and he's rummaging through the games himself. I think something went off in his head like, wait a minute, I need some games too. It was like, screw it. That somebody had to shoot it, so I picked up the camera. Whoa, whoa, your tone. It's all wrong. You do it again. Stab you in the face with the soldering iron. I got 22. Is this the Dongo stack? Yeah. He's got what, $40 worth? Bigfoot is definitely real, along with the Chupacabras. Actually, give me the 20, I'll give you 10. Thank you so much. I, okay, I, shoot I should be getting 50 back. It was one of those times where everybody walked away with a good haul, some decent games, some good fillers. Um, I think in total we spent 80 bucks and got something like 42, 43, 44 games or something. So I'd say it was worth stopping. Uh, I've known Billy for... Um... Well, we had a really great find at this flea market. We would have never found it if we hadn't have taken the wrong turn. And I guess that really just goes to show you that sometimes going down the wrong path can lead to great treasure. It's almost a reflection on life, if you will. I want a freaking root beer and a ice cream. We are headed off to the 2011 Comic Con in Irving, Texas. We go to these every year and there's always at least one or two people selling games. And so hopefully we'll get lucky with this one too. Put your shirt on. Um, about the shirt, I, I don't think I can do it, dude. Regina, my wife, she thought it'd be a good idea to buy a Star Trek uniforms for the convention to get in the spirit of things. She says, well, I got shirts for you and Billy to wear. I'm like, okay, what kind of shirts? She says, they're Star Trek shirts. I can't wear a stupid Trekkie shirt, dude. Just can't do it. Sorry, Put on the shirt. Come on, Japheth, we'll do Star Wars next time. Put on the shirt. Jay absolutely hates everything Star Trek. In fact, if he even sees Patrick Stewart's face, he just goes insane with anger. Put on the shirt. Cousin only cause Regina spent money on it. Thank you. I didn't want to hurt Regina's feelings, so I wore the shirt. You sent me a picture and was like, look what I got. And I was like, oh great. <laughs> I'm not gonna tell her I don't want to do this. Dude, really? Hat come off too? No, screw you. I'm real. I cannot believe I'm wearing this effing shirt. It's a principle. It's too, the sleeves are too short. The sleeves are short on all of us. So why don't we why don't we ditch the geek garb? Stop it! Stop whining. Live long and eat a dick. How about that one? <laughs> when they built this new convention center, they didn't think too much about parking. Parking was horrible. Billy almost got into a fight in the parking lot. <laughs> it's like we like we pull in, right? And you can go right or left. When you go right, there's no opening. So we gotta back up and go left. Well, the freaking a-hole behind us didn't want us to back up or something apparently so he's sitting here honking his horn and billy's trying to direct direct uh, Re regina you know so she doesn't hit anybody and i turn around and i see billy like yelling at this dude i was not in the mood it's kind of funny seeing captain kirk yell at some other nerd in a car <laughs> yeah actually during this confrontation i had the video camera on me why i don't know i mean I, the video camera operating guy, camera man should have been doing it. Imagine Captain Kirk trying to back up the Enterprise and you got Worf over there honking at him. <laughs> I have no problem at all beating somebody who's smaller than me. That's just the way game chasing go. What is up with the parking here? We had to park across the street, over the river, in some field. Muddy, we almost got stuck. Um, luckily, four wheel drive action kicked in and F mud, we got nothing on game chasers. All right, with the obstacles of the mud and the mouthy dorks out of the way, it's time to make our way into the building.
Yeah, this place is really, really cool. Uh, a lot of a lot of people in costumes, a lot of cosplay going on. It's just like any other sci-fi convention, I suppose. Whenever we're out looking for games, um, you know, we're old school. We always look out for Ninja Turtles, Transformers, G.I. Joe, uh, you know, Thundercats, He-Man, things like that. There's a lot of cool stuff here. Unfortunately, it's all overpriced. We walk up on this dude with a uh, pretty, good, pretty good little stash of games. Finally, there's somebody here selling some games. So like a couple box full. And they all seem pretty rare too. They all seem like they're, uh, they're, uh, they're hard to find. <laughs> oh, your tone. Yes, finally, Final Fight 2. Been looking for this. I'm out on 15. If you, it's, it's you. What about 10? I'd take it for 10 in a heartbeat. These are all the games you have? Okay. Um, I want to ask you about that one. Mm -hmm. uh, which one? Final Fight 2? No, the, uh, the Marvel. Oh, Marvel vs. Capcom. And the Mega Man. Okay. Um, the Marvel vs. Capcom I do for 30. And um, the, uh, the Mega Man X4, that's actually still sealed, but I'm only doing that for 14 right now. So. Okay. Yeah. Are these, are these the prices on these? Um, I'd come down, I could come down to uh, 10 on the Final Fight 2. 10 on the Final Fight 2? I could 2? do 10 on the Final Fight 2. The, the Adventure Island, that, that is, the third one is kind of tricky. I, I don't see a lot of copies of those, but I'd still do it for 20. So yeah, you know, that's probably the best I could do on those. Okay. Um, if you're planning on getting, you be planning on getting all four of them maybe? I'm thinking or? about it. I mean, what kind of deal can you give me on all four? I could do like, I could do like 65 for all four. For all of them? Yeah. 60. Cash money. All right. So, sounds good to me. Bucks. All right. Work. We paid 60 bucks for a Marvel vs. Capcom 2, Final Fight 2, Mega Man X4, uh, Factory Sealed, and Adventure Island 3. I think that's it. We're going around the exhibit hall a few more times. There's only one person selling games. I think it's time to start harassing some celebrities. What do you want to say? Just say, yeah, that's all you have to say. I'm yeah. talking to you, I never watch the We had this plan to sit out in the hallway and wait on Leonard Nimoy. And for lack of a better term, sabotage him as soon as he walked down the hallway. Um, we waited there a good 30 minutes or so. And then they announced that they were towing cars where they told us to park. So we had to take off because we weren't walking. I'll be damned. I'm not walking in 100 degree heat. Probably gonna go ahead and just get on out of here, especially since they're towing cars. Star Trek, Star Trek sucks. Star Trek's all right. No, you know what I'm gonna have to Actually, do? I'm gonna have to go what? home. I'm gonna have to go home and have a Star Wars marathon because I'm, I'm being- To cleanse yourself? Yes. All right, we're going to a auction, an arcade auction. So I'm opening up a bar, and me being a gamer, I want um, some arcade cabinets in my uh, place of business. Apparently this place, you can find arcades for under $50. I'd like to have a main machine, maybe a Pac-Man, so I'm, I'm super stoked, ready to go, and come back with something good. My favorite arcade game franchise is Tekken. Nothing else compares. DOA, Soul Calibur sucks. It's all about Tekken. I actually won a uh, Tekken tournament at GameStop for uh, Tekken 6. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of that one. There, there's, there, there was nothing like going to an arcade and having 10 dudes around a machine. There's nothing like that. My favorite arcade of all time has to be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The four player one, uh, back in the day, it was just amazing. I remember just begging my parents, begging my friend's parents to take us to go play that game. It's not a rodeo place. What is wrong with y'all today? The arcade auction is supposed to be going till nine o'clock. We get here, it's a little bit late, about six o'clock. Parking lot looks just a little bit empty for hundreds of arcade units. Got a bad feeling about this. I knew we should have been here earlier. Nonetheless, trying to stay optimistic. We go in, ask receptionist where the, uh, the auction's being held. 
She says, down the hall, take a right. I, I don't know, whatever. She gives us directions, we go. We're not seeing any people, not hearing any noise. So now I'm really starting to get a bad, bad feeling about this. We go down to the end of the hallway. We turn in the room where this grand auction is. And we missed it. The thing is over. We, we arrive here at six o'clock expecting um, auction and that ain't happening, obviously. We were really prepared for this event. We actually had two cameramen, two cameramen on this one. Of course, just like everything we ever try to do around here, somebody drops the ball. And in this case, um, somebody decided that they were gonna show up oh, seven hours late, okay? And basically put everybody behind schedule. I'm not gonna say who it was other than to say it was a cameraman. We got the freaking biggest worthless freaking crew that I've ever freaking seen. We got one guy shows up four hours late, one guy that doesn't show up at all, another guy who says F it hands off the camera to one of the hosts of the show and starts looking at video games himself, and another guy who after five minutes of freaking standing up is breathing so damn hard we think we gotta take him to the damn hospital. What the hell is going on here? Shit! <laughs> and everyone's laughing about it. Ha <laughs> ha, <laughs> it's real funny. God. <laughs>so glad that it happened on camera because if this hadn't happened on camera nobody would ever believe it so now we're heading out to mansfield just going one town over we haven't really done any looking in mansfield so we're hoping we we uh, have a have a good day today Y'all were doing it right in front of the register. Yes, they saw you. The whole we freaking were not, store saw you. We were not in front of the yes, register. Yes, you were, dude. You, you guys were right in front of the register fighting over that freaking game like a couple of children. The whole freaking store was looking at y'all. I think that's a little bit of an no, exaggeration. it's not. The whole store was not the looking at The whole store was no, looking at y'all, dude. It was embarrassing. It was freaking embarrassing. Dude, the whole store was not looking. It was like, it was off to the side, man. It was not in front of the register. The hell, it, dude, it was right in front of the freaking register. For some reason, Jay is a little extra mouthy today. You're wearing a dress shirt, unbuttoned, with a white wife beater and gym shorts. You know what we should do? We should put an icy hot on the toilet seats in the public restroom there. I'm not even fat. I didn't say you were. No, but stupid freaking Eric, Jay's getting chunky. This kind of did look like Jabba the f though in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> Screw y'all, because I can bench press a freaking Volkswagen. I'm coming here and try to rape and pillage this place for video games. They can eat a freaking. What can they eat? It's a family show. I'm not gonna say it. First place we're going here in Mansfield is an antique store, um, more like an antique mall, indoor mall. I've actually had a little bit of luck at an antique mall before. I actually found a pawn clone in the box for only twelve dollars. That's a pretty good deal. This place has a lot of awesome stuff, but we're not really seeing any games, which is no surprise. I mean, it was gonna be a long shot anyway. Holy crap, a freaking bag of GoBots, Transformers, and Voltron vintage figures. Who is this? I like toys. I was a huge GoBot fan. I actually had a pair of GoBot onesies. I love those things. Pajamas with the feet attached, I really, I really want some now. Where can you find some of these? I want some for adults. Me and him are sitting up at the front counter with these GoBots playing with them like we're seven or something. It's kind of pathetic. This is the post office. The lady that works here is telling us of a church thrift store that's just down the road. So we're gonna go check that place out. I cannot believe I got a whole bag full of vintage Transformers, vintage GoBots, and vintage Voltron figures for $13. Reminded them of their grandchildren. I'm pretty sure we did. In fact, on my way out, did you see her hug me? Did she really? <laughs> I'm so, I missed that. I'm serious, dude. She she goes, now y'all come back and gives me a freaking hug. I'm like, what the? F okay. Would you have? So 
So we go to this this thrift store uh, next. Um, walking around and we run across nothing. Strike two. There's a Salvation Army down the road and I have never been to a Salvation Army that didn't have at least a few games, so I'm eager to see what this place has. I have scored a Salvation Army before. I once found 40, uh, 40 Nintendo games for a buck a piece. So keeping my fingers crossed, hopefully, hopefully I'll score again. Let's see, I walked out of the Salvation Army with a big pile of nothing. Again, strike three. It's dinner time, I'm getting hungry. We've been out in this freaking Texas heat all day long. We have found nothing. We're gonna grab something to eat and try to figure out what we wanna do the rest of the day. At least I win there, right? Everyone knows I like to eat. I am getting fat and chunky. So we're sitting there eating and Billy's, Billy's tweeting and I decided it'd be kind of funny to, if he tweeted a picture of me with the mangina. <laughs> Oh, that's nasty. Honey Jay don't give a shit. Oh, there we go. One thing you don't do around the game chasers is let them know if you're having some kind of problem, like people calling and not saying anything and just hanging up on you. We pulled up the subway number and called them about three times and didn't say anything, just breathed kind of hard. And they were like, oh my God, they're doing it again. Hey, <laughs> That's a yes. Wow. <laughs> Subway found out firsthand. No way game chasing go. Hey, is this that store that was on that that, that internet show, um, Game Chasers? With all the manginas and the prank calling out of the way, it's time to get serious again and remember why we're here, and that's to look for games. All day long, we have been talking about Game Exchange and Waxahachie, episode one, and it's not too far from here. So what we're gonna do is go down there again. We know they're gonna have something and we, we don't want this day to be a total wash. We wanna salvage it somehow, so that's a good way to do it. Let's just go out there, see what they got, because if nothing else, they're gonna have good prices. You're talking about midgets on, on mopeds and aliens coming by, and Billy just goes, oh yeah? <laughs> we get to Game Exchange. We know we're gonna find something here. It's Game Exchange. Place full of games. Gotta find something. I was just finally glad to actually see some 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 video games. Thank you, JD Henry, for keeping our national history alive by working on the games. Eric. We have been chasing games for a very long time now. Um, most of that time without a camera on us, but nothing can prepare us for what was about to happen. So stupid Billy, I'm looking at the Nintendo games and about three rows down from where I'm at, I see stupid Billy's dumb hairy orangutan freaking arm swoop in and grab something off the shelf. And Billy looks at this game and he looks at me. I can't see the game yet. But the look on Billy's face freaking said it all. I knew at that moment that he he found something good. And I'm like, what'd you find? And I turn his hand. The Flintstones, surprise, a dinosaur peak. I was in complete shock, disbelief. for about a second and a half. Are you kidding me? Wow. I felt my, my body temperature start rising and I just got enraged. I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna freaking, this is BS right here. Billy caught me slipping. It was like euphoria, disbelief, and shock all at the same time when I saw that game. I thought it had to be Dino and Hoppy, the more common less expensive, way less expensive Flintstones game. Because I, there was no way, I just didn't register in my head that, that something that expensive would be on the shelf with all the common games. I was looking at like, this can't be what, I'm, what I think it is. 
This one obviously slipped through the system. They didn't know what they had. And he got it for five bucks. The game is worth around 300 or so. This Flintstone Surprise the Dinosaur Peak is such a rare game because in August of 94, um, it was released as a Blockbuster Video rental only, exclusively to Blockbuster Video. Nobody else had it. When Blockbuster Video started liquidating their inventory, getting rid of all their NES games, they sold them as previously played video games. That's how they got out into the wild. People bought them, but they were so, so limited in their production number because they were only exclusive Blockbuster rentals. There's hardly any of them out there. It's actually known as the second rarest game commercially released by Nintendo behind only stadium events. But because it wasn't for sale to the general public, pretty hard to find. So, good job, Billy. Get you, I gave Billy Contraforce. Rare, he wanted it. You know, I teased him a little bit. I was like, oh, okay. Jokes are over here, dude. Take the game. He wasn't coming off this Flintstones. No effing way. <laughs> wasn't gonna happen. Wasn't gonna happen. I, I honestly hope that uh, he gets up there and he says, wait a minute. <laughs> he, if that happens, you're the one get kicked in the nuts. Because it's your vibes. It's, it's worth it to you? Yeah. <laughs> The fact that you're breathing right now is really getting on my freaking nerves. <laughs> so Billy goes to check out, right? And I'm just watching Billy. I'm glaring at Billy, actually. I'm hoping, in the back of my mind, I'm hoping, please, this guy, please see this game, realize what you have, and be like, wait a minute. Let me check on this real, real quick. Nope, doesn't happen. Billy's sweating bullets. He's sweating bullets. Like, he's freaking nervous. We please turn it off. The guy rings him up. He tells him his total was like 12 bucks in games or something like that. And Billy kind of just slyly looks over at me. I had to leave the store. I was, oh, I had to leave. I was mad. I had to leave the store on that one. I'm happy for you, but I'm freaking angry at the same time. I will not be looking up games anymore until I rummage through all the things and uh, pick out what I want. Because I, had I not been looking up games, I'd have found that. I thought you were texting. No, I was looking games up. I thought you were texting. This is without a doubt the number one find from either of us, from both of us. It was, it was absolute fluke. None of us are ever hunting on a Monday together. We just happened to be in the area, which is why we stopped by in the first place. And this game just happened to get through their system, it just slip through their cracks and get placed on the shelf with all the other games. It's like the stars aligned for us. Let's see, what did I find at Game Exchange? Nothing like the Flintstones. <laughs> Doesn't really matter. Got me a couple box Genesis games, you know, for like two, three, four bucks. You know what? Don't don't even put what I got down here on the little thing. I don't want to see it. If I see it, I'm gonna rip your freaking head off and crap down your neck. Okay, because it doesn't matter. What Jay got doesn't matter. People are commenting all the time. Why do you go to these places? Why do you waste all the gas? Because you know the deals that you get is moot by the time you know it's all said and done because you've spent all that money on gas. This is why we do it. It's the thrill of the hunt. I mean, these games, these rare games, they're still in people's garages and they're still in people's attics. They're still laying around in thrift stores and pawn shops and flea markets. They're out there. If we can find them, everyone out there watching can find them. I'm gonna kill Billy dead for finding that damn Flintstones game. extra early today it's friday morning um we caught wind of this huge flea market in Bowie, texas called second monday i've never been to one of these once a month flea markets so don't really have any idea what to expect are you kidding me so this is what being up in the morning is like you have to go through traffic like this yeah Bowie's actually about an hour north of fort worth you know, driving around Texas, it can be pretty boring sometimes. I mean, you just, you pass this, uh, just trees and planes and the occasional barn will pop up, the occasional building with Mega Man painted on the front. 
a building with Mega Man painted on the front. So we roll into town about 9.30. One more turn and we're at this flea market, this huge flea market. The website built this thing up to be just ginormous. Shut up, bitch. I can't wait to see it. I can't believe what I'm looking at here. It's like, it looks like there's seven people at this flea market right now. It's empty. It looks like a ghost town. And we ask a couple of guys that were there, you know, we're like, hey, um, where's this grand flea market at that we heard of? It really starts, it kicks in the most tomorrow. Uh, they're setting up right now. Mm. And they're like, oh, Friday's a setup day. I'm not happy right now, dude. I cannot believe we drove an hour for this. The big day is Saturday and Sunday. It's not what the website said. Whoever's in charge of running the website, you need to change that. It's very misleading. And we walked around the flea market anyway. Well, we're going around here and we were coming across a, a lot of interesting people. I will say that. I know you're in Texas when the Christmas lights are shotgun shells. Do you know offhand if anybody around here, like any vendors you know, sell only any uh, mobile Nintendo games to our game? Well, there might be in some of the covered enclosed built. That's all I can, you know, like I say, you go in there and look and see, you never know what one feller has. They may have Nintendo this month and they have totally different junk the next month. Oh, that's my boom box. I, I put that Texas music on it. I gotta have my boom boom. I gotta have something past time. Oh yeah. You get old, you, you like it. music kind of passes time, but you know, you pass a lot of gas also, but you know, music is the best. All right, there is actually one person selling games. The only problem with that is it's just crap. Some of them definitely is a factory chip. So there might not be. No, it's not. We get it no, from a guy that. that puts them in truck stop convenience stores all over the country. So it's a distribution center. But they definitely oh, okay. have some yeah. stuff. They sell stuff. I'm still though, this is real cool to have in the box. Yeah, I can agree. Had some box games. I uh, picked up a complete in-box WCW NWO Revenge on Nintendo 64. Me and Billy played that a lot back in the day. Billy could never beat me and would wind up throwing down the controller and storming out of my house. I used to whoop him so bad. I could set my watch by it. After about his 17th loss, he'd had enough and literally throw the controller down on the ground and be like, dude, don't break my controller. I was always usually king of the ring. I was the champion most times. And there he goes, to the front door, slamming it like a child. I was the alpha dog in, in, in 64 wrestling. You know, they all looked up to me. Sometimes he'd be like, I gotta go do laundry on his way out. <laughs> <laughs> the 90s. Very disappointing to say the least. It literally took us about 15 minutes to hit every vendor that was there at the time. So basically the only thing left to do now is cruise the town and see, you know, if we can hit up some pawn shops and maybe get lucky. I want to try to salvage the day as much as possible just because it's so far away from home. It's not like it's down the road. Well, let's go. Let's check it out. You know out. what? Let's just freaking park right there and walk around. Let's okay. do this. Boxes. Oh look, especially when one of them is Coors. <laughs> Why settle for champagne and beers when you can have Miller Lite? So one common problem we're having here going into these pawn shops and these thrift stores is everybody we're talking to is telling us the same thing. Someone was just here last week. Someone was here two days ago. Oh, and he, he basically goes and buys everything up? 
reseller. Usually he'll come in and pick them up. Wow, so someone's beating us to the punch, huh? Yes, and so, I'm sure he goes to all of the stores. Somebody in the Bowie metropolitan area is going around buying all the games up and leaving us with the scraps. It has to be somebody who's buying the games in town and then is going to come take him back to the flea market um, tomorrow. How much would you do for this right here? Dollar and a half. Dollar and a half? Mm -hmm. Okay. That's Any game? What is that? Yeah. yeah. I'm just getting rid of what I've got left there. In our journeys in Bowie, uh, we go to every thrift store, every pawn store, every antique store. You never know what you're going to find in these old places. Five dollars for the suit. The Dongo got himself a spiffy little suit, and now he can go around town and um, be presentable-ish. Whoa, whoa, your tone. It's all wrong. Battletoads on VHS for 50 cents. I got an empty Genesis box for a quarter. Never know when you can use one of these. And to hold up my britches, I got this schnazzy little belt hill for 25 cents. And now I don't have to sag anymore. I love this place. I love this town. They look great. Thank you. Still walking around in downtown Bowie, and there's another antique store around here. I'm gonna go check this one out too. It is a, an antique store doubling as a restaurant. 15 years we've been coming here every Friday at 12 o'clock. It's mixed between a restaurant and an antique store and a soda shop. I'll put it into one. This is really cool. I wasn't expecting anything like this. So we call it nostalgia because of the old things about it. We've been open about 20 years now. We started uh, uh, with just a soda fountain and we wanted it to be really different from everybody else's. So most of the memorabilia that's on the ceiling is ours when we were kids. Not only is he the owner and he's waiting tables, he's the mayor of the freaking town. It's getting late in the day. Small towns like this usually close up pretty pretty early, you know, around five five o'clock. So we're gonna head on out. Is this a bad idea? Yeah, that's a very bad idea. This is not gonna end well. We didn't really find a whole lot here in Bowie, but I, I really enjoyed the town. The town was filled with some of the nicest people I've ever met. I like the townsfolk here in Bowie. My name is Ben Franklin. It's like, well, I'm an alcoholic. I'm wearing a blue shirt. Take a bow. A round of applause for your mama. Here it is, Saturday, day two of the weekend, and we are going to a flea market that happens every weekend out here called Trader's Village. The problem with Trader's Village is there are several resellers at this place, and they go and they buy all the games up from the small vendors and resell them. And I don't know why we're wearing the same clothes as the day before. Across the middle, Metal Gear Solid 3 on PS2, the red cover, it's mine. That's not red cover. If you handed me that, I'd throw it back in your face. So every booth we go to, same song and dance. All the games are sun faded. Um, all the games are overpriced. It's very easy to spot the resellers. The resellers always have uh, an area dedicated in their booth towards games. The ones you gotta look for are the booths that have a few games thrown in just with a bunch of other junk. So if they have something very rare, chances are they're not gonna know it. We pretty much know where all, all the booths are at this point, you know, because like I said, we've been here before, nothing has changed. We're gonna go ahead and go out to the back where these resellers are and I don't see what they have. So we walk into this lady's booth and you know immediately we go right to the Nintendo games and um, <sighs> Billy finds another gem. I could not believe what I was looking at. I reached in and I pulled out Little Samson.
It's yours, dude. It's yours. You serious? It's yours. You sure? Yeah. Dude, this is freaking rare. I know. It's yours. Billy finds another extremely rare game. Um decides to show some mercy and tells me that that you know that's mine this time. pretty happy so yeah i gave him the game but all this carrying and sharing stuff is over with it's run its course it's game on for now on i of course take the game and i turn to the lady and say hey how much 15 okay you're, you're gonna spend 15 dollars on a game huh i'm sorry he, he usually I'm not, he usually he, he's he well, a we'll, cheapskate we'll, we'll talk later we'll talk right, in a minute right, we'll see right. hang on we'll all see right. we'll see better deal when you buy more than two she go. said $15. Wow. Man, I like this lady. <laughs> it didn't stop there. I actually found a Bomberman 2, and I found Baseball Stars 2. Not too terribly rare, but not too common either. Find a, a game called Chubby Cherub? It's a pretty rare game, but it's actually not that expensive. You two better hurry up, I am starving. Why don't you shut your freaking face? One of my previous co-workers from like 10 years ago, who has a YouTube channel coincidentally, shows up literally 10 minutes after we were at this shop. So what do you have found so far? Um, I could just see the defeat in his face. Too little, too late, man. I think he blamed his wife, actually, um, for not catching those himself because she was trying to buy a, quote, stupid purse, I think. Uh -huh. If I would have just got here 10, 20 minutes earlier, that could have been me. He knew that he was just minutes away from getting that game himself, and I think it was at that point he realized the way game chasing go. Luck comes our way, you know, if it's not here, you Always. know, somewhere else, Always. you know. Yeah, because some dude apparently is going around buying everything around town the week before the flea market starts yeah. so he can go back and resell them. So, yeah, we, we got, you know, happens. Look at the draw, man, yeah. you know, you, you win some, you lose some. So I go to this lady, I hand her all the games. She's sitting there going through them. Some of them original, well, this is eight. I know what that is. Okay. Eight. I'm ten on this one because it's twenty. Uh, ten. 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 Okay, uh, can I get five on the virtual board? Yeah. Yeah, okay. We'll go ahead and do that. The lady goes, I'll do ten apiece on them. So I was like, all right, deal. Wasn't going to argue. Paid the lady, walked out, happy. And then she says, oh, someone had that in their hand earlier. What? Then why would they not have bought it? I don't know. $15 was just too much on Little Samson? Come on now. He got Little Samson for $10. You can't beat that deal. Well, unless you get Flintstone Surprise at Dinosaur Peak for $5. But hey, not everyone can do that, now can they? <laughs> so we're visiting a few more booths here at the Trader's Village Flea Market. Things stood out, all overpriced stuff like usual. So we're gonna head on out. This traffic is stupid, man. Where do you want to go to now? Game exchange? Nah, I don't feel like traveling all the way out there. Yeah, how's it going, man? My name is Jay. Um, I'm with uh, the Game Chasers. You guys have let us film there um, before. We are thinking about coming back in tonight. Is, uh, there, is there any chance we can bring our cameras in? Uh, sure, man. Okay, um, were you there last time we were there? Yeah, I was here. Did you see the last episode? <laughs> what do you... Are you serious? Um, well, hell, I don't know if we're coming back then. <laughs> um, yeah, no, dude, something like that happens. It wasn't, you know. That was awesome, dude. I can't believe that happened. I mean, that's what crazy things, you know. Yeah, it's uh, actually, I just found 
a uh, little Samson. So here's a little um, spoiler for you for the next episode. I just found a little Samson for $10. No way. Yeah, I swear to God. <laughs> I'm having a hard time letting Bowie go. Like, I, I have to go just to, to make sure that either A, there's nothing there, or B, we go there and find what is there. I, I can't let it go, so I tell Billy, I'm like, hey, um, I wanna go back to Bowie tomorrow. And before I can even finish the sentence, he was like, okay. We get to Bowie, it's alive and happening. We walk this place, find nothing. Very disappointing. Kind of a bust, um, kind of a big bust actually, but I'm glad we came because now we know not to come back. Jay out. You go out an hour and go to a small town, you expect there to be a little, at least a little, a little more of a chance for, to run across something rare. And that was our thinking going to this flea market. Come to find out, the rare stuff was right in our own backyard. The only thing that you can even say about that and the only way to kind of wrap up the whole weekend is to just sit back, reflect on it, and think to yourself, that's just the way game chasing go. That's the way game chasing go. from charge back forward he's coming down this area he's coming in all the way from canada to join us on our uh, adventures I, I love texas it was too cold up in raccoon city aka toronto and i just wanted to come down and be warm have my blood warm chill out with the game chasers and my other friends and see a new place we're gonna go out hit the town show them a few of our spots and see what we can find i want to see games and i want to hump things so you tell me what's going on i'll tell you what you're familiar with episode one right who oh, no. knows Okay, because you do watch. You, okay. I should fucking hope so. Okay, you do watch. <laughs> Let's go to Entertain Mark. Yeah, this place has a ton of Nintendo games and a ton of Super Nintendo games, just like always. Video games plaster on the walls. I see kids playing Street Fighter 4 poorly. I see Super Mario Brothers 3. And, and, and I, I can't even like process any of this because I'm looking, the chases are already looking at this this display case and they're looking at these loose cartridges and, and I'm looking around and everybody's like off doing their own thing and I'm kind of left there by myself. I'm like, I'm like, this place is too big. Hey, ask her if she has any more games. We wouldn't happen to have any more Nintendo games, would you? Uh, no. Nope, that's it? It's all? Yep. No, we don't have any, thank you. <laughs> you know, it used to be whenever we go to Entertain Mart, we would find the occasional gem. But recently, it's just like every time we go in, it's the same common Nintendo games, common Super Nintendo games that you find everywhere. And it's just, it's, it's almost like somebody's just picked through all the good stuff constantly right before we get there. After we've done some investigation um, on Entertain Mart, it turns out that most of the reason we may not find something there is because there happens to be an employee, um, I'm not going to say who, but this person is also a collector themselves. I've gotten at least three or four Super Mario RPGs, so I sell to uh, people at conventions. So. He or she gets dibs and, you know, obviously buys up all the good stuff. We walk in and we're just left with the scraps. I'll be your nemesis. This person can't work every day. We'll catch them slipping eventually. Look at this shit. Like seriously, you just need to get like a whole stack of Cybernoid. Complete your Cybernoid collection. <laughs> Look at that. So Wait. Terrence was pretty, pretty impressed by uh, Entertain Mart. I mean, the place is huge. He actually wanted us to take him to these places that we go looking for games. Um, not for himself, because he, he doesn't collect. I used to be a collector, and I'm actually not a collector anymore. I still love video games. But the whole reason I met Big Mike facilitated in my retro collection going to him. So he was looking for something for him. He got a bromance or something. I had Big Mike in mind when I, we were going out in terms of if I can get him something. But with Big Mike, his collection is around 2,300 games. 
And that's 2,300 complete games, not just loose cartridge only. You give up after a while. But I was hoping I could find, like, I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting, but I was thinking maybe some Neo Geo, like, MVS cartridges, like the arcade cartridges. Entertainment doesn't check rarity on NES or Super Nintendo games. So every time I go in there, I'm constantly thinking to myself, I'm going to run into Cheatham and 2 on Nintendo, but it never happens. It, it never happens. But one day, one day, one day it might. So I'm just I'm just interested interested to see what potential hidden gems are around, you know. So maybe some like really disgusting turbo, uh, some like CDI games, or maybe some Turbo Duo games. Gotcha. Now we're heading off to a place where Billy and I have had some recent success. Uh, we're going to Trader's Village. You guys got to come up and take a look at There is some there is some game chasing in Canada. It's just you know. It's on dog and sled. <laughs> and most of our game cartridges are made out of ice. So they may be useless to you by the time you get back down here. We headed off to this place called Trader's Village. And it sounded like some really weird, like Western frontier, exotic, you know, I'm gonna see horses and I don't know what the hell I was expecting. God, was I wrong showing up at this hole. When we have like a cold snap in the winter and I'll, I'll try to speak American for you guys, it could go as low where I live as like zero Fahrenheit. So to go from this temperature to zero and people still decide freely to live there. Trader's Village is a huge flea market, but it's extra big today. Billy's over there pointing at me like, oh, what's this guy doing? While him and Terrence are over there 69ing each other. He's always, look at it right now, he's trying to get ahead of us right now. We're gonna go chase. So the first booth we go to, uh, Billy sees this really awkward looking oversized Game Boy, like an original Game Boy. And it turns out it's a case. Uh, you open it up, you, you store the Game Boy in it, there's a place to store like 15, 16 games, I guess. And uh, it's closed and I'm trying to open it up. Um, the, the latch on it or something is, is like busted. And so I'm trying to work with it and it's heavy, it's got stuff in it and, and, and so I, I wanna see what's in it. Uh, the, lady, uh, the lady originally said $25 before I picked it up. And so I'm looking look in it, look in it. And she goes, can I help you? You got can that, Billy? Can I help you? He opens, tries to open it up, see what's in it. And the lady starts flipping out on him. And she's like, no, you can't touch this. And he's like, what? Can, can, it, can, can you open? Can you show me what's in? No, no, you steal from me. So at that point, Billy looks at her and is like, wait a minute. Didn't this lady kick us out before? So I take a look and I'm like, you know what? I think she did. She kicked us out of her booth once because Billy was opening up the, the uh, PlayStation games just to make sure that the discs and, and everything were, were, were in it. Stupid me. I wanted to actually pick up the PlayStation games that she was selling, okay? I didn't walk into her house, look at her TV stand, go, oh, PlayStation games, just start opening up. No, this is her stacking it on the table for public consumption to sell her merchandise. I pick them up, look at the CDs to make sure that they're not scratched. I'm not gonna be like, yo, how much for this this PlayStation game, PlayStation 1 game, and you're like seven bucks and I pay you and walk off, open up no disc in it. it doesn't, doesn't work that way, lady, you know? I mean, you gotta let people see the goods. And so she recognized Billy as a thief but not just mistaken identity. She singled him out as the guy. We all three look at each other like, what the heck is going on here? This lady's freaking out, making a big deal. So I'm like, hey, whatever, let's just get out of here. Terrence is like, F it, let's just go. So we go down a few booths. This lady follows us down, like two, three booths down and tells these people not to sell anything to us. She starts getting on the phone, calling security. And we're just like, cannot believe what's going on here. All because I wanted to look inside a damn Game Boy case. So these other vendors are looking at her like, what's going on? Looking at us like, what's going on? So yeah, there were some words exchanged there. I try to handle these situations in a mature manner. Search me, search me, search me. Pat uh, me down, pat uh, me down. You no, know, this, this lady, she don't want us in her booth filming fine, but you know, she's preventing other people from making some money. So you know what, F her. She's just telling them to go f themselves. And Billy's like, yes, ma'am, thank you. And Jay's like, I'm, I'm sorry to inconvenience you. Have a great day. And uh, we walked around and just Billy just felt so bad about the whole thing. So bad. 
Like, what did I say to that poor woman to make her so angry? I don't know. So we went and chased some more. That's not how it happened, by the way. She thought we were stealing from her booth, so she kicks us out. That's the second time that's happened. Once, See, once was a separate occasion. She saw and then me she stealing. comes down. She comes down like three booths down and tells them it was in Spanish, but I'm assuming she was like, "Hey, don't let these guys in here. They're gonna take your shit." So they see me stealing and they 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 blame these guys. Sorry. Like honestly, you go around and buy used games, especially if they're a disc. Wouldn't you like open them and have a look at see if they're scratched? Not at this flea market, no, sir. You hand over the money, and then people follow you to your car and then roll you for what you bought. I said, shut up. I ain't stealing nothing. Watch, and I would just empty my pockets, turn them out. Like, are you gonna pick all that for me? No, I didn't think so. So get your ass back behind the counter and give me a deal for offending me. That's what I would have done. Oh well, that's the way game chase and go. This is in a flea market, and this one store has all this nice shit on display, and it's not for sale. What's the point? I know, really? Like some nice hate stuff. Like, hate them. Do you know what it's like having a hard time? And you know, now Big Mike's got himself both uh, the Neo Geo MVS, which is the arcade cabinet, and then the AES, which is the home console of the Neo Geo. But before, when he was hunting down an AES, and he saw one of these things there, I'm pretty sure it was that. And he wanted to buy it, and they're just like, no, it's, it's not for sale. Why would you show it? Why would you dangle it? No kidding, right? He kind of reminds me, you know, that this this really cool guy, you know, he's, he went to some place called like I don't know what the hell it was, but he's trying to get like a Turbo Duo or something. We were gonna go to uh, Game Exchange, but we just didn't have time to go because it's a 40-minute drive. He wants to go to Waterburger, never been there before, so we're taking him to Waterburger, and now it's off to Target because he's never been to a Target. Kind of weird, but okay, you know, whatever. Let's go to Target. <laughs> 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 so you know we're sitting there shopping around and and terrence sees a shirt or two that that he he thinks he might want when he's trying them on and he's like yo where's the dressing room so we you know point off that way it's over there and he just kind of looks around and shrugs and just starts changing right there in the middle of the men's aisle some people might say that's weird but honestly i think it's something me and or billy would have done ourselves so yeah whatever but I just crank that shit out. I don't care if people are looking at me changing. What? what? Look at my titties. Look at my nipples. I'm a snake. I mean, somebody had to get naked in Target. Welcome to Texas. Wow. Damn. <laughs> Low ride in a Lincoln Town Car with a sparkly purple paint job. The day has been short with Terrence and our time with him has come to an end, but it was awesome hanging out with him. We actually first met him in PAX. The dude's just really cool, really down to earth. Um, fits right in with me and Billy and our shenanigans shit. So, you know, I uh, hope he had a good time here. And once again, I, I, I went I went chasing and came back empty handed, but my heart was full of awesome memories. Guess that's way game chasing go, bitches. <laughs> we haven't been game chasing what, like a month now? Uh, yeah, at least, uh, at least. Yeah. We're gonna go to this flea market out in Seagoville, Texas, just right outside of Dallas. Hopefully, it won't be riddled with resellers. Look, some of you gotta know about me and Billy. We're not Pat. We're not Pat the NES punk. We don't get to flea markets at, at 6 a.m. or tweet about it at midnight saying I'm camping out, waiting on this mug to open up. Nah. We like to get to flea markets at about 5 p.m. when everyone's trying to close up shop and go home and we're trying to find video games. We're just all a bunch of lazy Hey, you know what though? It don't matter. We'll, we'll still find Flintstones, uh, Little Samson, Chubby Cherub. Stop at the, uh, have you checked the, um, the P.O. box lately? No, I have not. Want to stop and check that? Do we have time? Yeah, yeah. It'll take a few minutes. We have had a ton of people uh, requesting to send us stuff. And at first I was like, no, no, no. But, you know, after so many people asking, I guess I was like, all right, let's just set up a P.O. box. Really? Which ones are those are those mine? Top one says to you. Oh, it does? Yeah. A fan named Eric from Indiana uh, sent me a box of stuff. Are you kidding oh, me? Oh, Look at this. Beautiful Joe. <laughs> Look at this. Beautiful Joe on PSP. I don't have enough PSP games. That's awesome. I didn't even have any of this, any of the stuff that was uh, sent to me. I've been a big fan even before Game Chasers came into being. The Kirk and Spock figures. Hey, homage to your trip to Comic-Con earlier this year. 
Hey Jay, did you hear the new Spock was gay? No, I didn't. Terminator 2 figures are some of the few toys to survive my childhood. I don't have a place for them and nobody wanted them on eBay. Anyways, keep up the great work. Vintage video, Vintage game. video game. That's sweet. That's awesome though. You know what, I'm gonna put this up. In my opinion, one of the coolest things in there, and it, it's gonna get a lot of use, Sonic the Hedgehog Walkie Talkies. This is gonna freaking rock. Uh, I got a good deal over here at this uh, particular vendor. Nintendo games for $2 a piece. Over, you read that? Roger that, what's your 20? Uh, my 20 is $20 in this dude's pocket and I bought all his games, sucks for you. What? <laughs> <laughs> Asian guy gamer sent you a giant condom? <laughs> yeah, he sent me a giant condom. And it's still too small. So we pull up to this place and it is a dirt flea market. This is going on. How much is it? Three dollars. Three dollars? Oh yeah. Oh, that's too much. I'll give you two. Uh, Ticket say three. They ain't gonna know. Perfect. Right up our alley. Reminds us of the place in Cleburne where we got all that stack of freaking games for like two bucks a piece. We walk right into the flea market and just so happens the very, very first booth we go to is a is a reseller. I got most of them. Yeah, I got most of them. There are two types of resellers. There are the resellers that they're collectors themselves and they know they know if a game is rare or valuable and uh, you're, you're, nothing's gonna get past them. But then there's the resellers that basically just buy up all the games in the flea market and then mark, mark them all up. You know, more obscure titles um, like, a, like a Bubble Bubble Part Two or a Little Samson or you know, Panic Restaurant, you, I mean, you name it. Those titles are more likely to slip through because they don't have the knowledge. Uh, they're just basically going by what's popular. Mario Kart. Um, 64, $15, I think Yoshi's Story, $15 also. I mean, great games, but guess who has two thumbs and doesn't pay that much for video games? This guy. Whenever I go to a reseller like this especially, what I'll do is I'll just basically skim over for um, uh, anything really rare. So, surprise, surprise, no Action 52 or Hot Slots and no Bubble Bobble Part 2. So, moving on. So we're going along and, and uh, looking for games, of course, and uh, we come across, Billy comes across a tripod that um, is pretty freaking good and pretty freaking cheap. Ask the dude how much, five bucks. He sees if the camera fits, it does. This is a high quality production show here. We go to the flea market to get our equipment. <laughs> Despite what y'all may think about this show and our budget, um, the equipment around here is pretty low brow. I don't know if you can, it's taped. We got a, um, turn it this way. Is that a a lollipop stick sticking through the um, thing here so the, the, the hinge is, is worked properly? But um, yeah, ask Terrence. Um, this green screen we're using, literally $2.50 at Target is what it cost us. Two, four, six, seven. Seven pieces of green construction paper. We were all big here. I mean, look at this. I could breathe on it and the legs would bend. The lighting's, oh, the lighting's professionally done, let me tell you, you got Walmart bags. A $5 tripod is a score. Two, two dollars? Two dollars? Two dollars, okay. I see a Game Boy and it's green. You don't see many green Game Boys. Um, original Game Boys, I'm not talking about a Game Boy color, an original Game Boy that's green. I think Jay would appreciate this. The day was, was good, the day was bad. We found a new place to go to. A couple guys said, yo, come out next weekend, we'll have more stuff. Let's see, I got me a original Game Boy that's green. I got me a Star Trek board game. And I got me a Nintendo game, Ultimate Air Combat. Honestly, the good stuff was, was found right here at the post office. Didn't even have to go far for that. Damn, I could have saved some gas. We are headed to Seattle, Washington for the 
2011 PAX Prime. I've never been to Seattle, so I'm looking forward to this. We're here in Seattle, and all I can say is thank you, thank you, thank you. I am so sick of 190 degree heat. We don't have a lot of trees and whatnot around here in Dallas, so uh, I got trees, mountains, nice fresh air. The weather was freaking amazing. A fellow YouTuber named Jason, who goes by the name of Metal Jesus Rocks, um, was kind enough to pick me and Billy up from the airport, uh, took us to his house. Him and his wife uh, brought us lunch and brought us a Ryan right now also. He was our guest cameraman, if you will, for the day. Metal Jesus Rocks is taking us to a place called AJ's. It's a record store. Man, they're full of games, too. Pretty much any, every system you can think of, they had some some games for it. I mean, I'm seeing 3DO, TurboGrafx-16. Anything cool? I kind of like that uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, little handful game. I wonder how much they're asking for that. They had Game & Watches, they had uh, they had a Turbo Duo. I've been wanting a Turbo Duo so bad. It does not have a price, so I'm asking the girl here, you know, what's the price of this thing? She, she, it's in the display case with all this other stuff, and she goes, well, I don't even know if it's for sale. So I put an offer on it, and I go, I'll give it 50 bucks. Even though she said that we could shoot, it freaked her out when that camera came on. And she was kind of just sidestepping the question. She literally hid behind one of the other store employees. And at that point, I'm like, dude, just kill the camera because at this point, I, I just wanted the systems. She clammed up and that was the end of that conversation. After about 10 minutes of this, I'm just, forget it. I guess that's just the way game chasing go in Seattle. I came out of there with one game. Great baseball in the master system. I got it for a buck. There are course things that I see here that I want and I'd love to have but at the same time I don't want to blow all my money here on day one and not have anything the rest of the weekend. So we go to a couple more uh, retail stores in town. Um, it's one place in particular I remember called the Pink Gorilla. It's pretty neat. Had a, had a bunch of good stuff there. So we're game chasing throughout pretty much the whole day. Um, I got sick like a little baby and ended up we went to this Goodwill. I didn't go in, I stayed in the car. And freaking Ryan right now goes in there and gets Xeno Gears on the PS1. <sighs> I, that could have been me, but no, I had to be sick. It's Thursday night, there's this huge dinner plan for all the YouTubers at Cheesecake Factory. Um, it's time to head out to that and get some grub, I'm starving. All the guys that I have been watching on YouTube for a very long time are going to be there. I get to meet them for the first time. So we get to the Cheesecake Factory and, I mean, everybody's there. Who, the who's who, Pete Dorr, Johnny Millennium, Gamester. Let's see, we showed up with Metal Jesus Rocks and Ryan right now. Retro Hunter showed up. Pat the NES Punk was there. All right, dinner at the Cheesecake Factory is over, so we're actually heading off and everybody's going to go across the street and uh, go to Gameworks and play some arcades for the rest of the night. So we did that. We um, had a great time over there uh, playing some some newer school arcades. Day one in Seattle, and so far I'm liking it. It's been a pretty cool day so far. I'm ready to hit the hay and get up early tomorrow for the first day of PAX and seeing what this thing's all about. So it's Friday morning, getting up. Eight o'clock, we're meeting Pat, the NES punk. So the three of us were walking around PAX. We we got in before the rest of the people there because we were, well, we were media, we were pressed. It was basically me, Pat, and Billy walking around uh, without having to elbow our way through crowds and, and things like that. So it was really, really neat. PAX is such a trip. You have all the major game developers showing off the latest games. We come across the Capcom booth and they've got a demo for Street Fighter X Tekken only their 37th Street Fighter game in the last three years. Everybody knows I'm a huge Tekken fan. I want to check this out and see how, how Tekken characters play on a Street Fighter engine. Yeah. Pat's pretty good at Street Fighter. He, he knows his stuff, kind of impressed. I still won though, just saying. <laughs> Sorry, Pat. Uh, me and Jay, we went back and forth and yeah, yeah, he beat me, so what? That's good, I like that, man. He that got a victory awesome. there, man. 
didn't count. It was an exhibition. I'm not a huge fighter fan, never have been. I didn't really have any interest in playing it. I was uh, kind of impressed with it. Not that I think it was just gonna be a complete bomb or anything, but it was actually pretty good. I can't wait for the Tekken version to come out. I played some 007 on the move on PlayStation 3, and I was so, so, so not impressed. I mean, it was clunky, and it was not intuitive in the least, and it was broken, and it was horrible. So we walk in the floor, and then all of a sudden, this, the floodgates open, and everybody and their mother finally are able to get into the, the PAX floor and it was just chaos. Unfortunately for the three of us, PAX did not have a lot of retro game vendors. In fact, there were only a few that we saw. So one of the guys running the Pink Gorilla booth um, thought he recognized Pat. Don't put my dumb ass right. on the internet, please. He was like, hey, I know you. And Pat's like, oh yeah, who am I? He goes, you're the nostalgia critic. You guess, Mike McKay, I'm not, I'm not the nostalgia critic. Uh, anything else I can... Uh, how about, hey, I love Nintendo. This you're the... Give you a hint, it's on his shirt. Well, <laughs> there he is. Oh, I'm on my shirt. Oh, you're at... No, because I just fucking watched that video. That video? Yes. No, not that. This oh is what God. stardom is all about, fame. Awesome. People almost knowing who I am. You're almost. The... He thought I was like 13 other internet reviewers. He's like, oh yeah, you're, you're this guy. I'm like, no, you're this guy. Yeah, dude, I, I feel so much as a do so because I just watched the video with you and uh, James playing those games and stuff. Yeah, that's and I was fine. Like, <laughs> but I, like, totally just flustered with the first pack shit. Um, I found me a complete in-box NXS and a complete in-box Marky Mark and the Funky Bunch on Sega CD. I paid $3 and $4 for those respectively, and uh, I think it's pretty good fine. <laughs> One of the things me and Billy really want to do while we're out here is watch the uh, Angry Video Game Nerd panel, and that's about to start. <laughs> hey, Pat, you NES punk. This is the nerd. Screening the latest episode of the Angry Video Game Nerd with James there and with Pat there seen up there on the actual the big screen uh, is is a really cool experience. Poop jokes and does not get tired of them. Let's let's keep the poop jokes away for a second here. Oh. So I got on stage with James and Kevin, had fun. I gave out NES games to people who were asking awful questions or good ones, and it was a you know a little time for Pat to shine. I was afraid I would say something stupid, which can tend to happen from time to time. I don't know when to shut up, like right now. All those shows will be on the new RetroWareTV.com app. He's announcing that there is a new app that's going to be for RetroWareTV.com. So yeah, so if you like my videos, if you're a fan of, say, the Game Chasers who are in attendance. So after the panel, um, one of James's guys, Ryan, comes up to us, me and Billy, and, and says, uh, Hey, we're filming an episode of Board James. You guys want to be in it. He could have just come up to us and said, hey, look, you two SOBs, you're going to be on an episode of Board James. You hear me? And if you don't like it, you can suck it. And we would have been like, all right. That's not going to be until later this afternoon, but at 4 o'clock, we got a YouTube meet and greet. Next 2011, I met all these people. Yay! What are you doing? Um, signing my name. So, yeah, we're here at the front steps of PAX, and uh, we've got some people coming up here. Um, you know, saying hi to us and saying that they love the show, which is really cool. It's uh, it's it's been a pretty surreal experience thus far. I just think, who could have thought up the oh idea to do a flea market what? video at first? Oh, oh my god! I'm not sure. <laughs> Holy crap! You ripped us off, man! You ripped us off, man! All right, the YouTube meetup is over. We just got a call from Ryan, and it's time to go do our board James episode. A victory! This is what winning looks like, people. This is what winning looks like. It was our turn to go up there and play um, a round of Loop and Louie with uh, James. It was really awesome playing a board game with James. I can't wait to see the episode when it comes out. 
I already saw it actually, and Jay is actually on for literally like a second, but it's okay though. We were on board James and it was awesome. For the record, I won whenever we played board James. I beat, I beat James. A tie's ass, I won! How is it a tie? How's it a tie when everyone has no freaking eggs left but me? I had one. No, you didn't have one. I won. I know what you're doing. I know what you're doing, and I ain't gonna fall prey to your freaking. <sighs> so, Gamester81 uh, talked to us earlier and asked us if we wanted to go to an arcade called Dorkies out in Tacoma. This place, Dorkies, is beyond awesome. Every classic old retro arcade game you can ever imagine. Centipede, Asteroids, all the stuff in the 70s and 80s. Tons of pinball machines. There were about 30 to 40 pinball machines, and they had some great machines. Some of the all-time best. Adam's Family, Twilight Zone. Oh, I was in heaven. Me, Billy, Pat, and Gamester playing um, the Ninja Turtles arcade game. And the four of us sat there and played it until we beat the thing. And that was that was really, really cool. I mean, it's a good game, first of all. And play it in good company like that, you can't ask for anything better. My favorite arcade of all time. For me, it was the icing on the cake of an awesome day. It was like we were 10 years old again. Tekken is the shit. Hey, Street Fighter sucks. King of Fighters what? sucks. Yeah. DOA. Oh, I'm a Street Fighter. After that, Street Fighter. Lose, lose, sucks. That's the way game chasing goes. That's the way game chasing goes. <laughs> yes! Yes! Two wins in a row! We were playing Tekken against each other, and I won the first three, he won the, the next two, and Pat's pretty good at Tekken too. Kind of impressed. Billy and Jay did the arm wrestling competition. I won't say who won, but one person was mad. It was Billy that who won, and Jay was mad. But uh, besides that, yeah, they had an arm wrestling machine there. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I'm talking about right here. This is what I've been looking for up here or wish was around here for years and there's just not anymore. Um, they, they really made, it, made us feel welcome and at home there at Dorky's. So we're driving home from Dorky's very late, about one in the morning, and all of a sudden, Jay just starts burping. I got a little gas. Now I think Jay had had a hot dog outside of Dorky's arcade off the street. Yeah, that's always a great idea for cuisine. I try to be courteous when I burp. I burp and I blow. Try to, you know, blow the stench off so, so nobody else has to smell it. If we're in a car especially, I'll put the window down and I'll blow it out the window. You know, just being courteous. Nobody wants to smell no freaking Polish dog burp, right? Well, the wind kind of pushed the burp back into the car. The first time it happened, um, yeah, the, the smell hit everybody like a freaking ton of bricks. And everyone was just like, oh my god, what the hell is going on? And literally, <laughs> I know, I know I'm not going to get through this story without everyone laughing, so I'm just going to do it. Literally, the whole freaking car almost puked at the same time. It was disgusting. We could smell from the other side of the SUV, but we had the windows roll down on both sides. Imagine the smell of sulfur, raw sewage, hot dogs, and death. So I felt a little bad for that, you know, it was my fault. Well, it wasn't my fault. Everyone was like, just get the Polish dog. So I blame you guys. <laughs> I blame all y'all for it. But he was doing this like he was 10 years old. <laughs> Forcing himself to burp. And it did, wasn't only once. Um, it, several times that happened. Uh, ultimately, I had to wind up every time I burped, just sticking my whole freaking like half my torso <laughs> out of the window. <laughs> just to make sure that that didn't come back in because I didn't want to get thrown up on. <laughs> uh, it's funny now, but at the time, if you'd asked any one of those guys, no. Actually, if you ask them now, they'd probably be like, F that guy, we're never riding in a car with him again. <laughs> Saturday morning, we tried to pull a prank on Pat um, called 
I guess it's just called the box spring or the mattress or something like that. Basically what you do is you switch the box springs and the mattress and you put the box springs on top and you make the bed like nothing's out of the ordinary. And when the guy goes to jump on the bed or sit on the bed or whatever, you know, I guess the joke is he gets hurt. <laughs> I walk out of the shower fully clothed, mind you, and I see Jay and Billy lying on the bed together, all relaxed. He's just peppy and ready to go. Me and Billy are just sitting there just watching him like like a hawk, just watching him. So he's obviously just ready to go to the PAX floor. Me and Jay are being lazy. He's not going to lay down. Billy said something like completely inconspicuous like, Hey Pat, you look tired. Why don't you sit down for a second? Hey Pat, uh, we're so comfortable right now. Don't you want to be comfortable too? I'm looking at these guys like they're insane. And Pat's like, you know, putting stuff in his backpack, getting ready to, to hit the, the showroom floor again, and stops and's kind of like... He looked at me like I was crazy. I'm like, yeah, don't you just want to, you know, relax maybe, lay down for a bit and be comfortable? And I'm like, all right, you guys are a little nutty. There was many times when we thought he was going to sit down, at least sit down on the bed. So this goes on for about 10 minutes, where they're alluding to the fact that these guys are so comfortable in a nice plush hotel bed. And for some reason, I'm an idiot because I'm not comfortable in standing up. So finally, Billy uh, gave the whole freaking thing away and he's like, hey, Pat, why don't you lay down? <laughs> <laughs> Billy breaks down and goes, all right, you were supposed to fly back onto your bed. And I'm like, why? Well, just, you know, we flipped the box spring in the mattress. He was like, oh, it would have been funny for me to break my spine. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. <laughs> or I'll try it out anyway, see what the effect would have been. So back first, jump onto the bed, which is really the box spring now. And it was fine. It didn't feel pleasant, but it's not like I would have severed my spinal cord. So it was a failed practical joke, but a failed bad practical joke. We don't want anybody to get seriously hurt, but you know, it's like someone, stub someone stubs their toe. It's like, eh, that sucks, but that's kind of funny. So Saturday, um, we basically just walked the floor with Pat, uh, checked out any exhibits we didn't get to see. I'm seeing here a lot of awesome games that I'm very, very, very interested in. I'm seeing Battlefield 3, Aliens, Colonial Marines. Skyward Sword. Well, the only problem is I really don't feel like sitting in line. Are you the one who forgot your name? Yes, no, no, he's, oh, no, he forgot. My name. I forgot though. He thought it was two other people. He thought no, it was. It's, it's not. The, it's not that though. I didn't think you were those people. I just didn't think. Period. So we're back here at the Pink Gorilla booth. Yeah. Well, that all aside, I'm, I could be just <laughs> checking out the Turbo CC in the box. Say what? Yes, I would love to show you that. Yeah, let's, let's take a look. Hard to find that in the box. Pat saw a boxed TurboGrafx-16 CD attachment that he just had his eye dead set on. The only problem is it's $200 price tag. I have the CD add-on system, but I don't have it in the box. Oh no. So my eyes were dead set laser beamed onto it. Comes with the free CD. Got the cable there. Yeah, yeah this, box is, this box is ridiculous. There's the unit. Was the actual CD unit? Yeah. Did you want to tell you? Not much to say about that. It plays audio CDs. And I actually saw it. I actually saw one like this at the, at the swap meet one time. I saw one just like this. I wasn't positive it was the same one, but it was. I could have got a replacement one just in case. I saw it just sitting there. Went back next week, it was gone. One of my biggest uh, screw up ever at a flea market was not getting a replacement. This clamps and it comes oh, apart. <laughs> so this is the unit to basically connect. TurboGrafx-16 with the CD. Separately though, this has a battery inside of it, so you can save your games to it. It's almost like a primitive flash drive. It was marked at $200. Now, I had to worry about shipping this thing back, which would have cost at least $50 or $60. So I had to factor that in. It would have been like nailing back a pyramid stone or something. We can work out a deal. You know what? If we can work out a deal, we I can, might uh... be able to. I'll have to, uh check with, well, I'm the manager of the uh, one of our stores in Seattle, um, so I do have some authority, but I might have to check with my boss man. Okay. But, you know, I'll see what we can do. All right. I, I have a price in mind. Uh, what, what is your price in mind? Uh, hundred bucks. I would buy it right now. All right. I will, uh, actually, I think I need to make a phone call, actually, real quick. Okay. Um, okay. 
time for some hardcore bartering action. I gave him an offer of 100 bucks. Now it was his turn for a counter offer, which I never got. Fortunately, back to my boss. He said that he's not gonna be a discount, not for anybody, not for anyone, not for anyone. So even if we plug your store, we give you thousands of people will, would watch this on YouTube. I know thousands. Game chasers, path idiots, punks can't work out a deal. He's the boss. He's the boss. So there was no counter offer. This is not how this works. I give you a price, you spit one back to me, and we work it out. I, I was devastated. You don't often see a TurboGrafx-16 CD system, let alone a boxed one. And it's cool because the box is so huge. <laughs> what the hell is he talking about? He used to be a douchebag. I know. <laughs> he's, be, he, he's, he's reveling the fact that I can't walk to the FedEx with a huge TurboGrafx-16 oh, box. Oh, wow. Oh, that wow. would have been really convenient. Though. Wow, yeah, dude. Yeah. But you know I what? feel for you, dude. We got a consolation prize. Instead of getting a good deal, we got a free poster. <laughs> <laughs> hey, free poster! Fucking hell, love packs! Yeah, he just picked up the scraps. <laughs> Just Dance 3 had a booth set up. I make a joke to the MC. I'm like, hey, can I do the worm on stage? And she was like, yeah, go ahead. You know, we encourage that kind of thing. So of course we go up here and make complete and utter fools of ourselves. What would you bet? Everybody that knows me knows that I'm king of the dance flow. That is really sexy. That just woke me up. So we get down to the end of the song, and this freaking lady calls me out. Like on the mic, she's like, hey, what happened to the worm? And I'm like, oh, I'm not going to do no worm, whatever. So freaking Billy gets the crowd freaking hyped up. I start pumping up the crowd saying, worm, 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 worm. I was like, well, all right. I got to do the worm because it's just the way game chasing go. No, it didn't hurt. I'm professional. I do the worm for a living. It's what I do. Saturday went by really quick for us. Now it's time to let loose a little bit and party some. Okay, so Saturday night and Pat got invited to a party at this brewery down the street and with us rooming with him for the entire weekend, he asked us if we would like to join because we're pretty much joined at the hip at this point and of course our response was yes. We get there and counting me, Billy, and Pat, there was probably like seven of us total sitting there talking with James and Kevin and just shooting the breeze and having some beers, good times. After about an hour of, of just us, it was like every internet personality in existence came crashing the place. But that was so awesome because at that point, it just went from, from just like this, this casual little get together to like this kicking party that was just crazy insane. Pretty much uh, shut down the whole bar scene in Seattle. Um, all of us guys and whatnot wound up back at the Far From Subtle Guys hotel room and hung out there for another 30, 45 minutes. It's like three o'clock in the morning. It was just about having an awesome weekend and doing something that 10 months ago, I would have never in a million years thought that I would have been a part of. It's Sunday morning. We've seen pretty much everything we want to see at PAX. So we're going to skip the last day and go Hunt for some more games with Metal Jesus Rocks. Pat had to bid us farewell. It was awesome hanging out with him. 
I hung out with Billy and Jay the entire time I was at PAX. Great guys, lovable little little goons, I guess. Went to a few more places. Um, didn't really come back with a whole lot. I did at this one flea market find a box of used old school Star Wars toys. Now granted the TIE Interceptor is missing one wing and the Slave one isn't exactly complete, but for $2 for the entire box, that's not something that you can turn down ever. Billy better find a way to get these Star Wars toys in his bag because I'm not checking another one. Crap's expensive. Basically, we spent the rest of our time in Seattle just checking out the city. I had a really great time here in Seattle. This, this entire weekend was just one of the best weekends I've had in a very, very long time. It really wasn't about what we we're going to come back with. It was about enjoying the whole PAX experience. What I have up here, what I brought back in my head with the memories, it's, it's much better than, than some rare gem that I could have come back with. Except for maybe stadium events. <laughs> <laughs>